Katerina. Yes, we can now report that Lucy Letby has been found guilty of the murder of seven babies, the attempted murder of six babies, after jury deliberations of 110 hours here at Manchester Crown Court. These were all children who were on the neonatal ward at the Countess of Chester Hospital between June 2015 and June 2016. Amongst her victims were baby boys, baby girls, sets of twins, and included two boys from a set of triplets. These were children that Lucy Letby, now 33, but at the time of these attacks was in her mid-20s, had a duty to protect, to care for and to heal. Instead, the jury here has decided that she attacked and tried to kill them. Uh, the nature of these crimes is difficult to comprehend, even tougher to report, and the scale of them is absolutely unprecedented. And after these guilty verdicts here today at Manchester Crown Court, Lucy Letby now bears the title of one of the UK's most prolific child serial killers of modern times. And we can also now report that the verdicts were delivered uh, over the course of several days. Uh, that Lucy Letby was present to hear some of those guilty verdicts, but today and at the end, uh, earlier this week, she decided not to be in the courtroom. She made that decision not to be in court to hear that she was found guilty of the murder of seven babies and the attempted murder of six others. She declined to appear via video link as well. But in court, in a case that has lasted 10 months, where there has been so much forensic detail, where there has been medical evidence, where we have heard from expert witness and the testimonies of colleagues of Lucy Letby, all of that so forensic. But when it came to the delivery of these guilty verdicts, there were highs of emotion, the sorts of types of which you rarely see in a courtroom, the victims' families present for much of the trial and also to hear those guilty verdicts being read out. There were gasps in the courtroom as some of those families heard that their children indeed had been attacked and killed by former neonatal nurse Lucy Letby. Many of those families burst into floods of tears. They were comforting each other at, as one guilty verdict was read out over the course of the past few days. One child's mother held what looked like a stuffed rabbit toy close to her face. Um, what now? Well, that we have heard from the judge in this case that sentencing of Lucy Letby will happen on Monday. Again, we understand from her defence team that Lucy Letby will not be present uh, to hear what sentence she will, uh, will be passed in her absence. But the court, the jury here, as I say, 110 hours of deliberation to bring those guilty verdicts, the murder of seven babies, the attempted murder of six others. They also returned verdicts of not guilty on two counts of attempted murder and one, were unable to come to a decision on six further counts uh, of attempted murder. And over the course of this trial, and the jury during their deliberations have agreed that the types of attacks and murders that Lucy Letby carried out involved her abusing the trust that was given to her because she wore an NHS badge and was a nurse on that hospital ward between June 2015 and June 2016. But we can also report at this time that Cheshire Police have confirmed that they are now looking into whether Lucy Letby could have been responsible for any further attacks outside of that time scale of the, uh, the, the attacks involved in this case. So beyond uh, that 2015 to 2016 time frame, we know that she was a nurse uh, for several years before that at the Countess of Chester Hospital, that she also uh, worked in work placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital as well. So that confirmation coming from Cheshire Police, who have been driving this investigation since uh, suspicions were first raised to them all the way back in 2017. So that news, just to recap from here, from Manchester Crown Court today, that Lucy Letby, a 33-year-old former neonatal nurse working at the Countess of Chester Hospital, found guilty by the jury here of the murder of seven babies, the attempted murder of six babies, and that result means that she is now the UK's most prolific child serial killer of modern times.
And Catherine, it's worth mentioning, isn't it, that this is one of the UK's longest running murder trials. Longest running murder trials and one of the UK's longest jury deliberations as well. And it has been quite an extraordinary thing for the jury here to have to deliberate on. They have been, as I say, going over months of medical evidence, medical reports, witness statements. It has been a challenge for media to sit and listen to that and digest it. Even tougher, I would expect, for a jury to have to listen to it, digest it, and then also decide if Lucy Letby was the one that inflicted harm upon these babies. Their decision here today that it was indeed her guilty of those murders of seven babies and attempted murder of six others. They've also had to analyse and look at the ways in which she attacked these children. We know now from the testimonies, from the medical evidence, that she used medical equipment and medicines that were at her disposal on the ward in order to attack these children. She poisoned some with insulin, others she force-fed excessive milk some she injected with excessive air, and others she simply physically assaulted. It's difficult, really, to comprehend that a woman who would have been in her mid-20s at the time could so terribly abuse the trust put in her by the victim's families, by her fellow colleagues, and abuse that trust put in her because she wore an NHS nurse's badge to carry out crimes of such an unimaginable scale. And, in fact, speaking to the prosecutors uh, who've been working on this case now for so many years, they say that Lucy Letby was someone who was devious, cold-blooded, calculated, someone that absolutely perverted her learning and someone who weaponised absolutely everything that was at their disposal. And from speaking with victims' families you get a sense that they had absolutely no idea at the time that this was happening. They had no suspicions of Lucy Letby at the time. And in fact, she told one parent when they saw her near her baby, she said, trust me, I'm a nurse. And I think that really sums up the absolute horror of what Lucy Letby has done, not only in murdering and attacking these babies, but also abusing that trust so cruelly and throughout this trial denying that she had anything to do with inflicting harm on any of these babies. OK, um, we also have uh, police, a released body cam footage of the moment Lucy Letby was first arrested. in the back seat over here. OK, well, these pictures from 2018, they show Letby after she was detained at her home in Chester. She's dressed in blue. The former nurse is escorted into an unmarked police vehicle by a female officer. She tries to sit in the car. Letby tells the officer that she's just had knee surgery. Katerina, this, uh, this case has, has shocked many people, but how important do you think that uh, Lucy Letby wasn't in the dock um, when the jury was discharged? Well, I think it will be utter, to utter torture, to be frank, for the families who have been here consistently throughout the course of this nine-month trial. Many have turned up every day of this jury deliberation in order to hear the verdicts from the jury and in order to see justice being delivered for them. And Lucy Letby, to make that decision not to be there to hear several of these verdicts come back, for her decision not to be in court now for the rest of legal proceedings and not to be here on Monday when we expect sentencing to happen, deeply disturbing for the families. I should also say that Lucy Letby's parents have been also in court during these proceedings over the trial and for most of these jury deliberations. Um, as I say, these were verdicts that were delivered over several different stages. Lucy Letby was in court to hear the first two deliveries 
um, of those verdicts, guilty verdicts. At that time, she did cry. Her parents cried. They were heard whispering to each other, you can't be serious, this can't be right, and then breaking down in tears. But also, equally, on the other side of the courtroom, we had the families of those tiny babies, families who had just found out that Lucy Letby was guilty of murdering and attacking their child, or in some cases, their children. We know now from these guilty verdicts that she attacked sets of twins, that she murdered two boys who were part of a set of triplets. And for those families not to now be able to see Lucy Letby in person for the rest of these legal proceedings, well, I think that will be a very, very bitter pill for them to swallow after... 10 months of a trial, which we know, having spoken to the victims, um, to the families of some of the victims, a trial that has absolutely pushed them to the absolute physical and mental limit. One family we spoke to said to have to hear Lucy Letby sit in the dock and consistently deny hurting their children when we now know that a jury has decided that she was, is guilty of murdering seven babies and the guilty of the attempted murder of six other babies. We know from speaking with families of two children that she tried to kill, these are two twin boys, that they have found it utterly, utterly sickening. And as you'll see now from my report, we get a sense of the scale of what Lucy Letby has now been found guilty of. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's in Cheshire, please. Look, it's Stefan, two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. This arrest led to the conviction of a killer. They told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I think that just sort of is there for a lot of them. Nurse Lucy Letby, now the UK's most prolific child murderer of modern times. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets is not going to be enough. Hiding her crimes behind a smile and an NHS badge we can now reveal what colleagues suspected all along. When alarms would go off, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, I wonder if Lucy is working tonight. Lucy Letby was nearly 22 when she started working here at the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal ward. Originally from Hereford, she'd been here for around four years when the attacks involved in this case began. It's about a 20-minute walk from where Lucy Letby lived to the ward where she worked. And over many months, the jury has heard difficult and distressing detail about what happened in that hospital between June 2015 and June 2016, about how, during that time, seven babies died, five boys and two girls, and about how ten other children suddenly collapsed and needed life-saving care. This used to be nursery one, also coined the hot room. This video was taken of the ward where Lucy Letby worked. It's where a jury agreed she killed children in her care. She used injections of insulin, excessive air and milk, even physical assault to make babies sick, collapse and die. On the 9th of April, she was working here in nursery one, Twin brothers, child L and M, were here too. Speaking to media for the very first time, the boy's parents remember the moment baby M collapsed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image, I'll never forget. When I went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like, like a rag doll, really. He was just crying, crying, and I, I said, oh, my God, what happened? And I was just praying to God, saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first-time parents. We didn't know what was going on. In fact, what they were seeing was the aftermath of Letby's attack. She had tried to kill both boys within hours of each other. She was standing calm and, and cool and what I can remember was at the time her body language and her behaviour totally changed. I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids, that's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Police first arrested and then questioned Lucy Letby 
in 2018. Okay, you have to take a seat in there for me, Lucy. I'll move that seat forward a bit. Shortly. Yeah, I've just had knee surgery. So oh, right, OK. <coughs> they told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I've been linked to somebody that's there for a lot of them. Did you have any concerns that there was a rise in the mortality rate? Yes. Lucy Letby has always denied every charge against her. I think we don't just notice as a, as a team in general the nursing staff that this was a rise compared to previous years. Behind that very angelic smile, there was a much darker side to her personality. She completely perverted her learning and she weaponized whatever was at her disposal. Uh, she betrayed the trust and uh, the, the, the faith that families had. You know, when um, they, she was telling them something, they would just accept it as correct. But over this trial, we've learnt that colleagues did have suspicions well over a year before police were called in by hospital bosses. Lindsay Artell was a nurse at the Countess of Chester. When alarms would go off during the night especially, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, colleagues that I know have used, I wonder if Lucy's working tonight. And that's exactly how it was. So people knew exactly what was going on. We've contacted the hospital for comment, but Lindsay and her husband also believe Lucy Letby attacked their son, Asa, when he was born premature and cared for on the ward. Cheshire police say they are already investigating if Lucy Letby hurt other babies over the rest of her career. But there remains a key question. Why Lucy Letby did this? I don't know whether we will ever be able to answer that question and only Lucy Letby can answer that. As a police officer, that's really hard to take and it must be really difficult for the families to accept that we might never have the answer as to why this has happened. Some also can't accept why Lucy Letby wasn't stopped earlier. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. Lucy Letby's job was to cure. Instead, she killed and attacked the most vulnerable, her victims so tiny, so fragile, they could be carried in just one hand. Katrina Vitozzi, Sky News. Katerina, we'll be back with you in a minute, but we're joined now by Sky's Tom Parminter at the Countess of Chester Hospital. This is where Lucy Letby worked and carried out those murders. Tom, she tried to kill these babies multiple times in many cases. Yes, and it is one of the most upsetting and distressing cases ever heard in a British court and it is a very dark episode within the history of the NHS to hear that one of the nurses who was working here could be guilty of such unimaginable crimes it is something that will send shockwaves through the NHS, through this city, which, of course, has had this allegation hanging over the hospital since uh, that year between 2015 and 2016 when Lucy Letby was attacking infants in the neonatal unit at this hospital. And really the culmination of this police investigation and subsequent trial has taken many years and these question marks and allegations have hung over this. What is a working hospital, a fairly standard general hospital known locally as the Countess in this part of the northwest of England? And uh, we will hear more from the hospital through the course of the afternoon. But as we heard in Katerina's report, there are major questions as to why colleagues who were trying to blow the whistle, who were trying to tell their management that something was wrong, that they were suspicious of what Lucy Letby was doing during her shifts in the neonatal unit here, that those whistleblowing procedures did not work as they should have done. And Lucy Letby was allowed to continue working. And as we know through the detail, the shocking detail that was heard over the course of the last 10 months in that courtroom in Manchester, that babies died after those 
whistleblowing concerns had been raised with management. Um, it was when the police were brought in to start investigating uh, to try to understand what was going on, because they had this spike in infant mortality on the unit that was above and beyond what would have been expected a normal rate of mortality, that questions were asked, reviews were taken, uh, took place, but there was quite often not a conclusive answer. And it was really because uh, of a number of reasons, but primarily people couldn't quite believe that a member of staff in such a trusted, privileged position could abuse that trust in such an unimaginable way. And throughout all this period, this hospital has continued to serve the people of Cheshire, of North Wales and Merseyside, as it does every single day, while they've had this extraordinary trial and set of allegations that we now know in many cases have been proven, found guilty by the jury, hanging over them. So there will be major questions for the hospital management to answer around what happened and how Lucy Letby was permitted to continue nursing after those allegations have been raised. But this is a truly upsetting and distressing case. And much of the detail that you may hear through the course of the afternoon, you may find distressing and upsetting. But that has been the nature of the court case that has played out in the last 10 months, in which they have gone through the individual care of all of those babies, some 17 babies at the heart of this trial. And they are known simply in the courtroom, they've been known um, by their names, but their names and identities have been protected, so they've only been reported as either child A through to child Q. But we have to remember that these are sons and daughters who, in many cases, were denied the chance of life due to the actions of Lucy Letby, and others who survived the attempts on their life during their time on the neonatal unit have now got life-limiting conditions because of it. All of the babies involved in this case should now be seven years old or so and thriving in life in primary school. But that chance, that opportunity was denied them by the actions of Lucy Letby. It is one of the most chilling episodes in the history of the NHS in this country. Stay with us, Tom. We do have a statement from Liverpool Women's Hospital. This is where Lucy Letby uh, received some of her training uh, and they're saying, following the recent trial verdicts, our thoughts are with the parents and families of the victims and everyone who has been affected. As detailed in news reports and information provided by Chester Police, there is an ongoing investigation relating to the full period of Lucy Letby's career, including tra training placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital, which took place between October and December 2012 and January and February 2015. Liverpool Women's NHS Foundation Trust has been liaising with Chester Police throughout this investigation, and we continue to do so going forward. As this is an ongoing investigation, we're unable to provide any more information at this time, any further details will be shared by Chester Police in due course. Anyone relevant to this ongoing investigation is aware and they have been supported throughout. So that's the very latest statement there uh, from Liverpool's Women Hospital, Tom. We have answers in that verdict, Tom, but for many of the parents, it won't bring that closure, will it? No, how could it? Because they in seven instances have been denied the chance of seeing their baby, who quite often in these cases was born premature, the most fragile, tiny patients that the NHS deals with. And of course, we have to remember that in 99.9% .9 of cases across the NHS, the work that neonatal teams do is exemplary. They manage to save children when it seems that there was no hope and they have total trust placed within them by of course the families who find themselves in that position of having a premature baby or having a baby who has serious complications after birth and it is the most precious of, of environments where trust is paramount and parents in that hugely stressful moment of their lives put that entire trust in the hands of NHS teams who as I say 99.9% .9 of the time do extraordinary jobs. But it is just that this one rogue nurse was operating uh, at this hospital. She joined this hospital 
at the age of 22 back in 2012 and had several years working uh, on the neonatal unit. She was apparently a diligent nurse, a, a valued member of the team, and then, for whatever reason, in 2015, started to attack some of the babies in her care. And throughout the trial, we have heard that there is no clear motive as to why Lucy Letby attacked the babies in her care. We know that there are a series of different methods that she used during those attacks, whether it was injecting air into the baby's stomach or uh, overfeeding the baby with too much milk. Uh, there was a variety of ways in which she attacked babies, but no one clear reason as to why she attacked those babies. And we've seen a wealth of evidence presented in court uh, that has painted a picture and the jury have been able to assemble that picture to come to those guilty verdicts. But this, these, this was a series of crimes where the perpetrator was not caught doing them on CCTV, for example. It was the weight of the collective evidence. There was no one single piece of evidence that convicted her, but the weight of evidence uh, from across the spectrum of that long-running police investigation that found hospital paperwork stuffed in bags at her home not far from the hospital here in Chester. It found handwritten, scrawled notes with the words, I am evil, I did this, among many other things that Lucy Letby had written down on scraps of paper that were found at her house. At her house. And crucially, the police found that of all the cases that they looked at, Lucy Letby was the, in their words, the thread that ran through them all. She was the nurse who was on shift for all of the incidents that took place, these babies collapsing in mysterious circumstances. And the two words that they don't really deal with very often in neonatal medicine is unexpected and unexplained. It would be very unusual to have babies collapsing when it wasn't expected in any way or wasn't explainable. But that is precisely what is happening, has happened in the neonatal unit here due to the actions of Lucy Letby. Uh, it is a, a very difficult case to listen to and to grasp because there is so much detail and so much of it, a very harrowing set of circumstances. But the impact that this has had on the parents in the first instance, the families of these babies who have either lost their lives or have been uh, often very seriously affected by the damage that was caused by Lucy Letby in those uh, days and nights that she was attacking babies on the neonatal unit for a period of at least 12 months. It is a, a quite staggering case and one that is leading to very far-reaching questions for the trust here and uh, those, of course, who we know were trying to blow the whistle on her. OK, Tom Palmin, so we'll leave it there for now, outside the Countess of Chester Hospital. Let's go back to Katerina Vitozzi, outside Manchester Crown Court. Uh, Katerina, can you talk us through how the families reacted today? It's been incredibly emotional to see what's been happening inside court. These were verdicts that we can now report have been delivered over the course of several days. The majority... Uh, of the families of the babies involved in this case have been present throughout uh, the 110 hours of jury deliberations and they met the guilty verdicts with absolute gasps. Many uh, of the parents of these babies, both those that died and those that were attacked, burst into tears when they found out that Lucy Letby was responsible uh, for the deaths or the attempted murders of their children. And, of course, by now, after a 10-month trial, these are families who were strangers to each other when their babies would have been on the neonatal ward but now know each other, joined through this absolutely horrific uh, set of crimes. And many of those uh, parents comforting each other. We saw one um, mother, as she found out that Lucy Letby had killed her child, holding a stuffed toy to her face, a tiny little rabbit, and burying her face in that toy, absolutely destroyed, absolutely crying her eyes out. And it's not just the families that we know have been affected in this. This has been an intense process for the jury who have had to sit through 
months of distressing and difficult detail, as well as a lot of very forensic detail. Three members of the jury today, as they came back with their final decisions, also broke down in tears in the dock. It's very rare to see something like that happen over the course of a criminal case, but I think it reflects the scale of what we have just witnessed and also the nature of these crimes with victims so small, so vulnerable. The prosecution said they could be carried in just one hand. And also, of course, very difficult for the families in court today not to see Lucy Letby in the dock herself. She has decided over the past few days not to come out of the cells where she has been held on remand since 2020 when she was charged of these crimes. She has also, by her defence team, told the court that she won't be present for sentencing on Monday either. Um, we have also had now some clarification uh, from the prosecution teams that they will take the next 28 days or they will have up to 28 days to consider whether they, whether they will seek uh, a retrial on six counts of attempted murder on which they were unable uh, to come to a decision. Um, we are expecting over the course of the next hour, I'm not sure if you can see the, the, the large number of press behind me, but they're all being set up now for further interviews. We're expecting statements uh, from Cheshire Police who have driven this investigation since 2017 when they were first contacted uh, by hospital bosses at the Countess of Chester Hospital. We're also expecting a statement from the Crown Prosecution Service as well as we believe um, from uh, solicitors of the families involved in this case. But we have, uh, during the course of the jury deliberation, spoken to the parents uh, of child L and child M. As Tom mentioned previously, these are children who, in terms of our reporting, we only refer to uh, by letter, of course, in court. Their names have been read out. And the parents of these children who were twin boys have tried to be present as much as they have felt to physically and mentally able to be at the course of this trial and speaking to them you get a sense of the utter anguish the hell uh, the father of child's children l and m described of having to sit in court and hear what they called lie after lie after lie coming out of lucy letby's mouth as she denied attacking their twin boys within hours of each other uh, during a set of attacks in april 2016. So very emotional scenes here at Manchester Crown Court and verdicts, I think that will resonate deeply, of course, how could it not for the families? But also we have to say for the police officers who have been investigating this since 2017, we spoke with both uh, the chief investigating officer and uh, the deputy chief investigating officer on this case, uh, both from Cheshire Police who have said they don't believe there is anyone who will come out of the other side of this investigation, the same officer as they were before. And in an interview with us, which was incredibly frank, it was one of the first times I'd ever spoken about an investigation that, because of its very nature, has had to remain very close and tight and, and tight-lipped. They have said it has been utterly traumatic, of course, for them as officers, but their sympathies, of course, now with the families of those babies that Lucy Letby killed and attacked. Hey, Katerina, thank you very much for now. Let's head across live to our correspondent, Tom Parminter. And as Katerina touched on there, Tom, it's been a long and difficult case for the police. Yes, foremost for the families who, of course, uh, Katerina explained there, have just been through the most unimaginable experience that anyone could think of. It has just been very, very difficult listening, just from our perspective, to reporting this as a trial, the detail of what those families went through. But as you say, a difficult and challenging case for the hospital and the trust here, and also the police officers who had to go about trying to work out what was going on on the neonatal unit in the building behind us here at the Countess of Chester Hospital. And that was very much a learning process for those detectives in the first instance as to how a neonatal unit works and how the spike in deaths and sudden collapses of infants simply didn't really have a logical explanation. And that is why people were asking questions in that first uh, period, but not really knowing definitively what was happening. And to a certain degree, 
they had to think the unthinkable, that it perhaps among the hypotheses that they were looking at, that one of inflicted harm could even be possible was something that the police officers had to try to work out and then try to investigate and piece together the evidence that would then support that hypothesis. So very difficult, challenging police investigation that started back in 2017, and here we are in the summer of 2023, finally hearing guilty verdicts in relation to many of the charges that Lucy Letby faced about her time working on this unit. It is a 12-month period that the court case has focused on and the care of 17 young babies. And they assessed many other cases as part of the scoping of their investigation. And we can take a look now at just what they found as they started that process and also the harrowing details of what happened to some of the babies. It's the case nobody wanted to believe could be true. But for the police, convicting Lucy Letby was the culmination of a painstaking and distressing investigation. The key aspect of this investigation has been always asking ourselves, A, who else could it be if not her? Lucy Letby started working at the Countess of Chester Hospital in January 2012, just before her 22nd birthday. She joined as a nurse in the neonatal unit. But from January 2015, the mortality rate at the unit began to rise above what might be considered normal rates. It was unexpected and unexplained are two words they don't deal with in neonatal medicine. If a child collapses, it's usually explainable um, and it's usually always expected. On the 5th of August, child F was in nursery two. Letby was looking after another infant in the same room, but at 1.54 in the morning, child F suffered an unexpected drop in his blood sugar and a surge in his heart rate. The baby survived, and a blood test revealed he'd been given insulin that he didn't need. There was no reason why no baby on the unit was being prescribed it. It was kept in a locked fridge next to the nurse's station. And this pattern continued. There were more babies who lost their lives or suffered unexpected collapses. The initial focus uh, was around the hypotheses of you know, what could have occurred. So it could be an organic reason, it could be a virus. Um, and then one of the hypotheses was that it, obviously it could be um, inflicted harm. The more experts they talked to, the more evidence they gathered, the more the case started to take shape. Then, on the 3rd of July 2018, Lucy Letby was arrested. Searches of her home in Chester and her parents' house in Hereford uncovered patient records and handwritten notes that gave clues about her state of mind. Among the scrawled notes were the words, I am evil, I did this. In her bedroom, stuffed into these shopping bags were hospital handover sheets. In total, 257 were found. Many included details of the babies Letby had allegedly harmed. Her social media showed searches for 11 of the families affected. Police also discovered that she sent one of her alleged victim's parents a sympathy card on the day of the baby's funeral. She kept an image of the card on her phone. Crucially, the police also analysed her shift patterns. Look at the line of crosses. They showed that Letby was the only member of staff on shift when all the incidents took place. On the 11th of November 2020, over two years after she was arrested, Lucy Letby was charged with murder and attempted murder. Letby always denied harming the babies in her care, but the evidence told a different, more harrowing story. Well, the parents of one of the babies, which Lucy Letby attempted to murder, has told Sky News that Letby 
put their family through hell and what she did is going to affect them for the rest of their lives. Now, to protect the identity of the parents, Sky News has allowed them to speak anonymously, voiced by actors, and this is what they told us. So how are you feeling at the moment with everything that you've been through over the last few weeks? Me, personally, it's been very difficult, very mentally and physically draining. Also, working at the same time, getting time off work, it's been, been challenging. And what has been the most difficult part of this trial for you? Previously, we didn't know our other child was involved with the attempted murder. We knew about Baby M, what happened on the 9th of April 2016. And until then, we were very, very happy. Oh, we were ecstatic. First time parents. We were happy and knew everything was as good as it could have been at that time. And then just tell me when you suddenly realised things were going to go wrong. Well, on the Saturday, the 9th of April, we'd come down with my parents to see the boys. Everything was going well. We held the boys. We went back upstairs because my wife was in the ward upstairs. And then within 10, 15 minutes, a nurse is coming, charging upstairs, saying, you need to come back down. And I was there first because my wife was still in bed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And th the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image I'll never forget because it's on the brain. When I went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like like a rag doll, really. One of the nurses, Mary Griffiths, said to me, I've not done anything, I've not done anything, and, and Lucy was behind her, and I was just praying to God, saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? And then after 30 minutes, he recovered. How did you feel at that point? I was just, I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first-time parents. We didn't know what was going on. What did you see of Lucy Letby at that point? She was just standing like that. How was she standing? Very calm and cool. At the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. After the incident happened, I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Did you suspect Lucy Letby at any point in that time? No, not at that time. She was very cool, calm, calculated, and a criminal-minded lady, but we didn't notice anything at the time. We didn't know anything even afterwards until the police came knocking. When the police came to our house and told us, your second child is involved with Lucy, we were shocked and we said we didn't know about Baby L. Why had they not told us about Baby L? We did know about Baby M, but they hadn't told us about Baby L. So they didn't tell you that he had gone into any difficulty at all? No, not the insulin and all the blood sugars and all that. We didn't know anything about that until the police came. And how did you feel when you heard that? We just couldn't believe it, because we already... We knew about Baby M and we accepted that bit, but we didn't know what Baby L had gone through the night before. It was just unbelievable. We couldn't believe it. When you have heard Lucy Letby talk in court, time and time again, denying she harmed any babies. I feel very sick of her. Oh, my God. I, I go home with a headache. I have to take paracetamol every day when I go home just because I have to listen to her lie and lie and lie. And I say now, enough. Don't tell lies, please. When you've sat there in the dock and taken the oath, I think just please say everything that's right and, and true. So why are you telling lies? What has Lucy let be taken from your family? Everything. She took everything. Our joy, happiness. I'm not the same person I was before. I was happy-go-lucky, you know, go with the flow, always smiling. But now I've become reserved, so, like, in the shell kind of thing. I'm, and there's no doubt it's going to affect me for the rest of my life. There's no way you can get away from it. It's been hell, to be honest. Very, very horrendous. What has it meant for you to know that Lucy Letby has been able to work on a unit for years with people knowing they were concerned about her and knowing what it's done to your family and to so many other families? How does it feel to know that that has happened and been allowed to happen? It's hard to put into words just how it could have gone on so long, why it went on so long. These are the answers we need, but that's a different part of the investigation. We have to wait for the hospital to answer those questions but it could have been stopped. That's the fact. 
Do you think the hospital should have done more to get Lucy Letby off the unit? Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Why did they wait until 2016? Do you think that some babies could have survived? I think so, yeah. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. What has life been like day to day? Has she caused any long, life-changing injuries to your sons? As far as we know, Baby M did have a scan and the doctors did say that one part of his brain is damaged permanently. So he might may deviate from his peers and stuff. At the moment, if you look at him, you wouldn't think any differently, just like a normal child. So it's something we'll just have to keep monitoring over the years as the years progress. Is that something you're worrying about every day? Yeah. Yes. How let down do you feel by the hospital? Very, very let down. They could have stopped it. They could have done it a lot earlier. And they need to be held accountable as well. Obviously, I know they didn't know there was a poisoner at work, and it's difficult to prove that. But the doctors did speak up. The doctors spoke up in 2015. They should have acted on that. If you were to describe Lucy Letby, what does she mean to you? To me, nothing. She means nothing. Just an evil person. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. And she already proved with her note, she wrote, I am evil and did it with a purpose. We see through her note. The green note, the yellow note. So she proved her note already. We saw it. She said, I'm evil. How does Lucy Letby being found guilty provide justice for you? What does it mean for you? It provides a bit of closure. Um, not completely, but at least a bit of closure that they've got the right person and she's going to be punished for it. I'll be very happy. If the punishment is proper and the proper sentence, then I would be very happy. Is there any sentence that will justify what you've been through and what your sons have been through? Life sentence. I want a life sentence. But it's not going to do justice, no matter what. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets is not going to be enough. It will be justice, but it won't be enough, whatever the sentence comes. Let's go back to Katerina Vitozzi. Uh, Katerina, police have released a statement. What have they said? Yeah, this statement coming from Cheshire Constabulary in the last few moments. They were the force who've been investigating this since 2017. And this is a, a statement on behalf of the senior, a deputy senior investigating officer, uh, Nicola Evans, who says, today is not a time for celebration. There are no winners in this case. Our focus right now is very much on the families of the babies. The compassion and strength shown by the parents and wider family members has been overwhelming. Today is all about them and we must not lose sight of that. I cannot begin to imagine how the families in this case feel today. Uh, and the statement goes on. We will all take some time to reflect on today's verdict, both the guilty and the not guilty verdicts. I would like to say thank you to the families for putting their trust in us and I hope that this process has provided them with some of the answers that they have been waiting for. We will continue to work closely with each of the families in the days and weeks ahead in order to ensure they have the support they all require in light of everything they have experienced. My thoughts and those of the whole prosecution team remain with them at this very difficult time. And the statement continues, the details of this case are truly crushing. A trained nurse responsible for caring and protecting tiny premature babies, a person who was in a position of trust, she abused that trust in the most unthinkable way. I cannot begin to understand what the families have had to endure over the past seven or eight years, but we have been humbled by their composure and resilience throughout this whole process. That statement from Cheshire Police there, and we have spoken with the investigating team today. Their thoughts, obviously, with the families of this, but it's also worth reflecting on the officers involved in this since 2017. Officers saying that they will not come out of the other side of this case the same officers that they were. Such is the distressing and difficult detail, the scale of what they have had to deal with here, bringing the UK's most prolific child serial killer to justice today at Manchester Crown Court.
This is Sky News, live from the Countess of Chester Hospital, after nurse Lucy Letby was found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care. Letby, the most prolific child killer in modern British history, was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's Chester, please. Okay, step in two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. When arrested, Letby denied the charges and tried to blame failing standards at the hospital. He told me that it's during me a lot more deaths than I feel like just sort of was there. Police are now reviewing the care given to 4,000 children at the Countess of Chester and another hospital where Let Be worked. She'll be sentenced on Monday, with prosecutors now deciding if they'll pursue a retrial on six other counts of attempted murder. Hello there, good afternoon from Chester. Lucy Letby has been found guilty of murdering seven babies in her care and trying to kill six others. Letby, a nurse here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, will be sentenced on Monday. She is the most prolific child killer in modern British history and police are now reviewing the care of 4,000 other babies. She worked here at the hospital from 2011 until her arrest in 2018. Babies were unsuspectingly collapsing on the ward and dying in a way that doctors didn't expect. The one presence in each of those incidents was Lucy Letby herself. As jurors heard in this trial, Letby was a constant malevolent presence in the neonatal unit. Let's go to Manchester Crown Court. Sky correspondent Katerina Vitozzi is there for us. And uh, Katerina, this has been a very long trial, more than nine months. The jury have deliberated for well over 100 hours. And today we can report on those guilty verdicts. Yes, the scale of what the jury has decided today is really quite unimaginable. The nature of the crimes committed by that former neonatal nurse, Lucy Letby, almost unimaginable, very difficult and distressing detail for everyone involved in this case. Jury members today in court, as the final uh, decisions were announced, three of them had their faces in their hands and were in floods of tears, but also, of course, over the course of several days, as these verdicts have been delivered, we have seen family members of the victims in this case also seeking comfort in each other. We've seen families burst into tears as they learnt that Lucy Letby was guilty of attacking or indeed killing their children. We saw one mother of a child who had just learnt that her child had been murdered by Lucy Letby holding a stuffed toy to her face, dissolved in tears as she held this small stuffed rabbit close to her face. It has been a trial that has lasted nine months, jury deliberations that have lasted over 110 hours, one of the longest jury deliberations uh, of modern times to bring this verdict now of Lucy Letby, guilty of the murder of seven babies and the attempted murder of six others, and now a woman who holds a title which you don't really expect ever to have to say in the course of reporting, that of her now being the most prolific child serial killer in the UK in modern British history. And as you'll see from my report now, this has been a long and difficult investigation and a long and difficult trial for everyone involved. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's... This arrest led to the conviction of a killer. They told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I think that just sort of was there for a lot of them. Nurse Lucy Letby, now the UK's most prolific child murderer of modern times. She's taken lives.
She's tried to take other babies' lives, so whatever sentence she gets is not going to be enough. Hiding her crimes behind a smile and an NHS badge, we can now reveal what colleagues suspected all along. When alarms would go off, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, I wonder if Lucy is working tonight. Lucy Letby was nearly 22 when she started working here at the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal ward. Originally from Hereford, she'd been here for around four years when the attacks involved in this case began. It's about a 20-minute walk from where Lucy Letby lived to the ward where she worked. And over many months, the jury has heard difficult and distressing detail about what happened in that hospital between June 2015 and June 2016, about how during that time seven babies died, five boys and two girls, and about how ten other children suddenly collapsed and needed life-saving care. This used to be nursery one, also coined the hot room. This video was taken of the ward where Lucy Letby worked. It's where a jury agreed she killed children in her care. She used injections of insulin, excessive air and milk, even physical assault to make babies sick, collapse and die. On the 9th of April, she was working here in Nursery One. Twin brothers, child L and M, were here too. Speaking to media for the very first time, the boy's parents remember the moment baby M collapsed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image, I'll never forget. When it went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like, like a rag doll, really. He was just crying, crying. And I, I said, oh my God, what happened? And I was just praying to God saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first-time parents. We didn't know what was going on. In fact, what they were seeing was the aftermath of Letby's attack. She had tried to kill both boys within hours of each other. She was standing calm and, and cool. And what I can remember was, at the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Police first arrested and then questioned Lucy Letby in 2018. You have to take a seat in there for me, Lucy. I'll move that seat forward a bit. Sure. Yeah, I just had knee surgery. So oh, right, OK. <coughs> they told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I'd be linked to somebody that was there for a lot of them. Did you have any concerns that there was a rise in mortality rate. Yes. Lucy Letby has always denied every charge against her. I think we don't just notice as a, as a team in general when this and stuff that this was a rise compared to previous years. Behind that very angelic smile, there was a much darker side to her personality. She completely perverted her learning and she weaponised whatever was at her disposal. Uh, she betrayed the trust and uh, the, the, the faith that families had. You know, when um, they, she was telling them something, they would just accept it as correct. But over this trial, we've learnt that colleagues did have suspicions well over a year before police were called in by hospital bosses. Lindsay Artell was a nurse at the Countess of Chester. When alarms would go off, during the night especially, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, colleagues that I know have used, I wonder if Lucy is working tonight. And that's exactly how it was. So people knew exactly what was going on. We've contacted the hospital for comment, but Lindsay and her husband also believe Lucy Letby attacked their son, Asa, when he was born premature and cared for on the ward. Cheshire Police say they are already investigating if Lucy Letby hurt other babies over the rest of her career. But there remains a key question. Why Lucy Letby did this? 
I don't know whether we will ever be able to answer that question, and only Lucy Letby can answer that. As a police officer, that's really hard to take, and it must be really difficult for the families to accept that we might never have the answer as to why this has happened. Some also can't accept why Lucy Letby wasn't stopped earlier. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. Lucy Letby's job was to cure. Instead, she killed and attacked the most vulnerable, her victims so tiny, so fragile, they could be carried in just one hand. Katrina Vitozzi, Sky News. Really harrowing, isn't it? Listening to the detail of what Lucy Letby did while she was working here at the hospital and heartbreaking too, hearing from uh, the parents. Our correspondent, uh, Katerina Vitozzi, is uh, outside court in Manchester. And Katerina, we know, as you've been saying, many of the parents were inside the court where you are listening to much of the evidence. But also uh, the court here in Chester had a live feed of proceedings, so families didn't have to travel all the way to Manchester to listen to what was going on. Uh, we'll return to you a bit later, Katerina. Uh, we have got some uh, statements being read outside court. Uh, DCI Nicola Evans, uh, Pascal Jones from the CPS and also uh, Janet Moore from the Cheshire Constabulary who looked after families. Let's listen in. Team, when I say that all of their babies will forever be in our hearts... I would like to thank all of the families in this case for their exceptional resilience and strength throughout this entire investigation. Their composure and their dignity during this trial has been truly overwhelming. The investigation into the circumstances surrounding this case started in May 2017. Since that time, Hundreds of witnesses have been spoken to by a team of dedicated detectives. Many of those witnesses have returned to court on numerous occasions to give evidence. Without their honesty and their support, the families would not have received the justice that they have received today. I cannot begin to imagine how the families in this case feel today. I just hope that the, today's verdicts bring all of them some peace of mind for the future and that we have answered some of the questions that they were looking for. Cheshire Constabulary will continue to support all of the families in this case in the coming days and weeks ahead. There will be a period of reflection as everybody comes to terms with what they've experienced here today. I will now pass you on to my colleague from the Crown Prosecution Service, Pascal Jones. Thank you, Nicola. Lucy Letby was entrusted to protect some of the most vulnerable babies. Little did those working alongside her know that there was a murderer in their midst. She did her utmost to conceal her crimes by varying the ways in which she repeatedly harmed babies in her care. She sought to deceive her colleagues and pass off the harm she caused as nothing more than a worsening of each baby's existing vulnerability. In her hands, innocuous substances like air, milk, or medication like insulin would become lethal. She perverted her learning and weaponized her craft to inflict harm, grief, and death. Time and again, she harmed babies in an environment which should have been safe for them and their families. Parents were exposed to her morbid curiosity and her fake compassion. Too many of them returned home to empty baby rooms. Many surviving children live with permanent consequences of her assault upon their lives. Her attacks were a complete betrayal of the trust placed in her. My thoughts are with families of the victims who may never have closure, but 
who now have answers to questions which had troubled them for years. I will now hand over to my colleague Janet Moore from Cheshire Constabulary. I'm a family liaison coordinator with Cheshire Constabulary. I've been asked to read out a statement on behalf of all the families in this case. Words cannot effectively explain how we are feeling at this moment in time. We are quite simply stunned. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Over the past seven to eight years, we've had to go through a long, torturous and emotional journey. From losing our precious newborns and grieving their loss, seeing our children who survived, some of whom are still suffering today, to being told years later that their death or collapse might be suspicious. Nothing can prepare you for that news. Today, justice has been served and a nurse who should have been caring for our babies has been found guilty of harming them. But this justice will not take away from the extreme hurt, anger and distress that we've all had to experience. Some families did not receive the verdict that they expected and therefore it is a bittersweet result. We are heartbroken, devastated, angry and feel numb. We may never truly know why this happened. Words cannot express our gratitude to the jury who had to sit through 145 days of gruelling evidence which has led to today's verdict. We recognise that this has not been an easy task for them and we will forever be grateful for their patience and resilience throughout this incredibly difficult process. The police investigation began in 2017 and we've been supported from the very beginning by a team of experienced and dedicated family liaison officers. We want to thank these officers for everything that they've done for us. Medical experts, consultants, doctors and nursing staff have all given evidence at court, which at times has been extremely harrowing and distressing for us to listen to. However, we recognise the determination and commitment that each witness has shown in ensuring that the truth was told. We acknowledge that the evidence given by each of them has been key in securing today's verdict. Finally, we would like to acknowledge and thank the investigation team and more recently the prosecution team who've led the trial to a successful conclusion. The search for the truth has remained at the forefront of everyone's minds and we will forever be grateful for this. We would now ask for time in peace to process what has happened as we come to terms with today's verdict. I would now also like to read out a statement on behalf of the team of family liaison officers who have worked as part of Operation Hummingbird. On behalf of our team, dedicated family liaison officers, I would like to thank all of the families for the immense fortitude and extreme resilience that they have shown over the years. They have acted with dignity and reservedness during a very long trial, whilst hearing the most horrendous evidence. We are all extremely humbled by them. I hope that the support that we have provided to all of the families has been of some comfort to them during an incredibly difficult period. We have worked closely alongside His Majesty's Court Service to ensure that the families have been able to watch court proceedings in Manchester as well as remotely over the past 10 months. This has assisted them greatly in being able to view the trial with more ease. We would like to thank court staff for all their help with this. Whilst today's verdict can by no means relieve the suffering that families have gone through and are still going through, we hope that will bring them some comfort. Our thoughts remain with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the response to these verdicts uh, from the police and also from the Crown Prosecution Service as well as the uh, family liaison coordinator for Cheshire Constabulary and you can see it uh, a number of points uh, in those statements DCI Nicola Evans uh, who co-led Operation Hummingbird this investigation looking uh, visibly uh, moved and at times upset she praised the parents for their dignity and composure she said I can't 
cannot begin to imagine how families feel. I just hope that they have some peace of mind for the future and said that there will now be a period of reflection. Uh, Pascal Jones from the Crown Prosecution Service saying that let be weaponized her craft, harming babies in an environment which should have been safe. She had a morbid fascination with those babies' parents. And we heard, uh, lastly, from Janet Moore, who has uh, dealt with the families over such a long period of time. And she said in her statement, to lose a baby in these circumstances is unimaginable. Justice won't take away the hurt, the anger and the distress. The families are heartbroken, they are angry and they are numb. Uh, let's return to Manchester Crown Court, where Sky correspondent Katerina Vitozzi was listening to those statements. Uh, she's been covering this trial for us. Uh, and as we heard there from the police, Katerina, this investigation began such a long time ago, 2017, and parents have had to wait many years to get to this point. Yes, and it was an investigation that, for them, started with a simple letter written from the Countess of Chester Hospital Administration to Cheshire Constabulary, reporting that there was a spike in deaths that they had seen on the neonatal ward between June 2015 and June 2016, and asking Cheshire Police whether they felt there was a reason now to open a criminal investigation into what happened over the course of various conversations and meetings with consultants and doctors at the hospital Cheshire Constabulary decided that was what they had to do and it has been a long and very difficult process for all the investigating officers. They said it was a very difficult moment when they had to knock on the doors of the families involved in this case and tell them that they believed that their baby had died or been attacked and that was inflicted harm and that the person that they suspected of it was a nurse who was on that ward. And you could see the emotion on the face of the Deputy Senior Investigating Officer, DCI Nicola Evans, there. She spoke with us just a few weeks ago about this investigation. She was so open, so frank, so honest, and quite rightly putting as much focus on the families, of course. This is their loss, these were their children, this is their tragedy that they will have to bear, and this is the justice now for them, but also reflecting on the impact it has had on the investigating officers themselves. This was a small team at first, but an investigation that grew in size and in momentum and has become a case the scale of which none of these officers have ever worked on before. And I remember being very struck when Nicola Evans, who we've just heard speaking outside the court here, telling us that she didn't think any officer involved in this case would come out of this the same person they were before. And it's not often you hear that sort of emotion coming from an investigations team, but I think it simply reflects the scale of what the jury has decided today, that neonatal nurse Lucy Letby is guilty of the murder of seven babies and guilty of the attempted murder of six other children, the scale of those charges, the nature of the victims, so tiny, so vulnerable, babies who Lucy Letby had a duty to protect and to care for, but children who she instead attacked and killed. And I think, most of all, you got a sense, both from the police and from the Crown Prosecution Service, that the families had no idea what Lucy Letby was doing they believed in her as a nurse. They believed and put trust in her because she wore an NHS badge. And as the Crown Prosecution Service prosecuting lawyer, Pascal Jones, said, this was a woman who perverted her learning and weaponised whatever was at her disposal, whether it was attacking children with injections of insulin, whether it was force-feeding them with milk, whether it was pushing excessive air into their bloodstreams, or whether she simply took a hand to them and physically assaulted them. They are means of attack which are almost too horrific to have to consider. They're crimes that are difficult to comprehend. And it has been very, very distressing to see families in court having to listen to the final moments of their children's lives or moments when their children 
collapsed and needed urgent resuscitation and urgent care and distressing to see families not only having to relive what would have been undoubtedly one of the worst, if not the worst moments of their lives, but then also to have to find out that it was a woman that they trusted who was behind these acts of harm. And today to be denied that opportunity to see Lucy Letby in the dock, it is absolutely horrendous for them to have to consider now that they will not see her in court any further. Lucy Letby deciding that she will not be attending court, tomorrow, uh, court for sentencing on Monday. She's declined coming into court physically. She has said that she will not appear via video link either. But the families in court throughout the trial, in court to hear those verdicts, and such emotion, as of course you'd expect as those guilty verdicts were read out, families in tears, families comforting each other, families who were strangers when their children were on the neonatal ward, but who now know each other, united by this utter tragedy and these terrible crimes, comforting each other, one family member comforting the other, some simply inconsolable, their faces in their hands, one parent holding a tiny stuffed toy to her face as she found out that the jury here had agreed that Lucy Letby, a woman whose duty it was to protect her child, had killed her. Katerina, it is uh, incomprehensible, uh, isn't it? And uh, we know this trial, it was uh, incredibly complex, uh, a huge amount of evidence, and we should perhaps just uh, ponder the scale of the police uh, operation. 70 officers and civilian staff working together uh, over six years. They built a case using 32,000 pages of evidence uh, and medical records running into thousands of pages, around 2,000 people were spoken to in order to gather as much evidence as possible to bring the case to trial. 250 people uh, were identified as potential witnesses by the uh, prosecution, although of course not all were needed in the end. And uh, during the time that uh, Lucy Letby was arrested, she was arrested on three occasions, there were 30 hours of visit video evidence uh, with her. Uh, we've just had a, a statement from a uh, solicitor, Slater and Gordon, who represent uh, two of the families involved. Uh, their representative, Yvonne Agnew, had the following to say, well, today marks the conclusion of this trial. It is not the end of our search for answers and our fight for justice for our clients. For more than eight months, we've had to hear some of the most harrowing details about what happened to our clients' children, something no parent should ever have to experience. Becoming a parent is a particularly vulnerable time in anyone's life. If your child needs special care, in that moment of helplessness, you put your utmost trust in medical professionals to do their best for you in what many people will tell you is the safest possible place, a hospital. We are determined that lessons are learnt by the Countess of Chester Hospital, the NHS and the wider medical profession so that no babies or parents are put in harm's way like this again. So uh, those lawyers uh, reflecting on what many people will be saying today is how was this allowed to happen? How could a nurse carry out such crimes over a period of at least a year without being stopped? Um, let's bring in our correspondent Tom Parminter who's here with me at the Countess of Chester Hospital to try and unravel some of that because we know Tom don't we that quite early on suspicions were raised by very senior consultants at the neonatal unit uh, but that whistleblowing was ignored. They were told not to make a fuss. Yes, the level of detail that we've heard through the course of this trial and that the police have shared with us is very distressing. It's one of the most upsetting cases I think ever heard in a UK court. And we're stood here on the hospital site at the moment with the permission of the trust. And this is the building behind us, the women and children's building. And you see, just standing here, mums and dads coming in with their tiny newborn babies for care or leaving the unit. And it was those families seven years ago on this site, in this building, that put their entire trust, as parents do every moment of every day, in the neonatal teams who are so specialised and so used to dealing with the most delicate, fragile patients. And some of these babies that have been 
looked at in the case and we now know were murdered by Lucy Letby were very premature babies. And the most delicate care is, of course, required, and the most specialist care is required. And pa patients, as we, we know, whose parents have to put their entire trust in those teams. Quite often, they can't even have any physical contact with those babies. And Lucy Letby abused that position of trust in the most unimaginable way. And as you rightly say, there were suspicions about her. This went on for a 12-month period from June 2015 until the following summer of 2016. And we know that consultants were trying to say, look, there is a pattern here, something is going wrong. And we believe Lucy Letby could be part of that. And the whistleblowing procedures at this trust at that time, just for whatever reason, did not intervene quickly enough. And the parents, or some of them in this trial, know quite horrifically that if those concerns had been acted upon, if she had been moved away from frontline duties while the hospital investigated, their babies would not have been attacked. And that is a harrowing position and one that will lead to far-reaching, deeply serious questions for the hospital management here. And I think, frankly, it is one of the darkest chapters in the history of the National Health Service. And Tom, we know that Lucy Letby was on duty uh, on overnight shifts for uh, a lot of her career. She seemed to enjoy overnight shifts. They were uh, easier for her to attack babies. Eventually, she was taken off those night shifts and put onto day shifts. Uh, the hospital management uh, assumed that that was the right thing to do. But of course, the attacks kept happening. It was only when she was taken off duty altogether and put behind a desk on clerical duties that all the uh, uh, deaths, all the collapses came to an end. Yes, and it is that unusual high rate of mortality that, of course, prompted questions in the unit as to what was going on, why was it more significant? And I think one of the themes is that people didn't want to believe that that could even be possible, because why would a neonatal nurse in that position of trust abuse that trust in those kind of ways. Why would a nurse attack a young baby? Why would a nurse inject insulin into their bodies? Why would a nurse inject air into their stomachs? And it is, it is something that, of course, leads to very profound questions. It is something that the police had to do a lot of learning around. And we can take a look now at the detail of the police investigation and just what happened to some of the babies in Lucy Letby's care. It's the case nobody wanted to believe could be true. But for the police, convicting Lucy Letby was the culmination of a painstaking and distressing investigation. The key aspect of this investigation has been always asking ourselves, A, who else could it be if not her? Lucy Letby started working at the Countess of Chester Hospital in January 2012 just before her 22nd birthday. She joined as a nurse in the neonatal unit. But from January 2015, the mortality rate at the unit began to rise above what might be considered normal rates. It was unexpected and unexplained are two words they don't deal with in neonatal medicine. If a child collapses, it's usually explainable um, and it's usually always expected. On the 5th of August, child F was in nursery two. Letby was looking after another infant in the same room, but at 1.54 in the morning, child F suffered an unexpected drop in his blood sugar and a surge in his heart rate. The baby survived, and a blood test revealed he'd been given insulin that he didn't need. There was no reason why no baby on the unit was being prescribed it. It was kept in a locked fridge next to the nurse's station. And this pattern continued. There were more babies who lost their lives or suffered unexpected collapses. The initial focus uh, was around the hypotheses of, you know, what could have occurred. So it could be an organic reason, it could be a virus. Um, and then one of the hypotheses was that it, obviously it could be. Um, inflicted harm. The more experts they talked to, the more evidence they gathered, 
the more the case started to take shape. Then, on the 3rd of July 2018, Lucy Letby was arrested. Searches of her home in Chester and her parents' house in Hereford uncovered patient records and handwritten notes that gave clues about her state of mind. Among the scrawled notes were the words, I am evil, I did this. In her bedroom, stuffed into these shopping bags were hospital handover sheets. In total, 257 were found. Many included details of the babies Letby had allegedly harmed. Her social media showed searches for 11 of the families affected. Police also discovered that she sent one of her alleged victim's parents a sympathy card on the day of the baby's funeral. She kept an image of the card on her phone. Crucially, the police also analysed her shift patterns. Look at the line of crosses. They showed that Letby was the only member of staff on shift when all the incidents took place. On the 11th of November 2020, over two years after she was arrested, Lucy Letby was charged with murder and attempted murder. Letby always denied harming the babies in her care, but the evidence told a different, more harrowing story. Well, you may be wondering uh, why we haven't named any of the babies who died uh, or haven't named any of the, the families who have uh, lost little ones. Well, the reason for that is quite simple. The judge placed a court order banning us from doing so. I think the uh, feeling was, understandably, that by uh, putting their names in the public domain, it would add to their stress at uh, what is the most difficult of times. Uh, so it uh, will be the case that we will not be naming any of those uh, little babies uh, throughout the course of uh, our coverage. A big question, of course, is why? Why did Lucy Letby carry out the... There was a fellow doctor who was not named during the course of the trial, a male doctor, who whose relationship with Lucy Letby was focused on very intently and a lot of messages between the two of them were scrutinised during court and it was put to Lucy Letby that uh, she was romantically involved with that doctor and wanted to impress that doctor and uh, get him in the room alongside her to be involved in the efforts to save the babies after Lucy Letby had attacked them. It is a very bizarre logic but it is something that was put to her and she frank flat, flatly denied that that was the case she says she was not romantically involved with that doctor that they were just very very good friends and the police concede that we may never fully know why lucy letby attacked the babies as she did during a 12-month period working in the building behind us here at the Countess of Chester Hospital. And this is a dark chapter that has hung over this hospital for many years now because this goes back to 2015 to 2016. The suspicions around what was going on, external reviews carried out that didn't really find a conclusive answer. It was only when the police were asked by the Trust to investigate in 2017 that they set off on a journey of investigation to unravel the very high mortality rates, to look at the suspicions of other staff on the unit directly pointing at Lucy Letby herself. And it is through that police investigation that gathered together all of the evidence as we saw there, the shift patterns, the notes that were found in her house, the paperwork, the hospital confidential paperwork, the medical notes that were found that she had taken from the unit here back to her home about half a mile to a mile away here in Chester. All of that together, along with witness um, statements and, of course, expert opinion on what was causing these babies to collapse, that it had to be intentional harm, that the wealth of that investigation was its width and it allowed the police to get the court case to court. And one of the most telling moments, I think, was when the police officers explained to us that moment in their investigation when they'd got to the point of charging Lucy Letby. In conjunction with the Crown Prosecution Service, they got to the point of laying those charges. And often in a police investigation, that is a moment of 
satisfaction, almost of celebration sometimes in a, the privacy of a police investigation room. But the investigating officers have told us that there was simply silence in the room when they told their colleagues, these officers and civilians who've worked so many hours to piece together this case, that really uh, there was nothing that was said in the room at Cheshire Police when that moment came because it dawned on them that the suspicions and allegations that they'd been investigating for so long were actually going to lead to a court case in which they would be tested very vigorously and now today results in the news that we've been able to share that there are those guilty verdicts in relation to seven of the babies that Lucy Letby murdered. It is a very distressing case that I think has left every police officer, every member of court staff and everyone who has been part of it deeply affected. And of course, this is a maternity unit that has had to continue functioning through this really difficult period, a hospital that has had to deal with this trauma alongside the day-to-day -day demands that, of course, any hospital has. And it is, of course, something that has the babies and their families at the very heart of this, but the shockwaves from this case go very far and wide. They really do, Tom. Uh, on your screen now, you can see the outside of the Countess of Chester Hospital. We're expecting a statement very shortly from Dr Nigel Scorn. He's the medical director here. Um, Tom, we were talking about motive, um, and the court heard during this trial that she was uh, excited. Ah, uh, here he comes. Let's uh, listen to Dr Nigel Scorn, medical director at the Countess of Chester Hospital. I'm Dr Nigel Scorn and I'm the medical director here at the Council of Chester Hospital. I speak for the whole trust when I say how deeply saddened and appalled we are at Lucy Letby's crimes. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital and our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. We cannot begin to understand what they have been through. This case has had a profound impact on our patients and our local community and also our staff who come to work every day determined to provide safe and high quality care for all of our patients. Our staff are devastated by what has happened and we are committed to ensuring that lessons continue to be learned. We are grateful for the cooperation of our staff especially those that have maintained the utmost professionalism whilst giving evidence in this trial, sometimes on multiple occasions. We will continue to support them and our other staff to ensure that they receive the care and the support that they need. We would like to extend our thanks to Cheshire Police for their extensive investigation and the work they did to bring this case to trial. We'd also like to thank them for the comprehensive support that they have provided to all the families involved. Since Lucy Letby worked at our hospital, we have made significant changes to our services. And I want to provide reassurance to every patient that may access our services, that they can have confidence in the care that they will receive. Finally, and most importantly, our thoughts are with all the families and loved ones at this very difficult time. Thank you. Dr. Scorn, I have to ask, why did hospital managers try to stop Lucy Letby from being investigated? OK, so that was uh, Dr. Nigel Scorn, a medical director here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, uh, saying that uh, he and all the staff here are appalled at what happened and that he can't begin 
to understand uh, what the families are going through and feeling. He said that he and his staff are committed to understanding what happened and he thanked the police for uh, both their investigation and for the work and support that they uh, have given the families of those uh, little victims. And he also made the point that since Lucy Letby stopped working at the hospital, uh, significant changes are made. And as you've probably seen, cars coming and going uh, behind us here. This is a working hospital, uh, still very much uh, a working neonatal unit uh, behind me here. Uh, mums coming in to give birth and leaving with uh, little ones uh, uh, all the time. Uh, but he said that patients must have confidence in the work that uh, is carried out at the hospital. Um, let's um, uh, uh, let's uh, hear now from uh, a mum who uh, told me that she believes her newborn baby was harmed by Lucy Letby here at the hospital the day after she made a complaint about the nurse. Lindsay Artell gave birth to her son, Asa, in March 2016 here at the Countess during the period when Letby was attacking babies on the neonatal unit. Uh, she also, uh, at uh, one stage, was a nurse here. This is what she told me. It was March time, so it was two, 30 weeks or so, finished work, um, and on the day we'd gone in to get monitored um, and they all came rushing in and it was a, an emergency C-section and it was done within like 10 minutes. <laughs> it was exciting, but it was nervous because you, you didn't hear a cry or anything, you don't hear anything, so it was a bit quite shocking and even, even though we, I could see he'd gone to the other side, I'd sent Alan, my husband, over to take a picture. Um, and the oxygen hadn't been flowing because there'd been a placenta eruption. So he obviously didn't look like himself. So they had to take him straight off. So I just seen him as they went out. And then I didn't see him later. He was born at 10 to 3. And I'd already seen him about midnight that night. And Lucy Letby was working on the unit at the time. Uh, what dealing did you have with her? So um, relaying the information to my husband, of, literally of what the doctor had told me that morning, um, of him, how he was getting on. Like I've um, said, she wasn't actually Ace's nurse, but she was covering somebody's break, um, overheard our conversation and and felt the need to come over and tell us that, um, I'm sorry I over, I'm overhearing a conversation, but I, I don't like parents getting, you know, their hopes up too much because you never quite know what could happen. Now, as a parent, I absolutely erupted and was like furious, like, how dare you take that hope away from me? And then... As a professional, I'm I'm saying to the matron and to herself that it was completely inappropriate to take somebody. You can't speak to people like that. I'm there when people get news terminal illnesses. Never once have I ever said, oh well, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't hold out too much hope, you know, because everyone needs hope. So you you made a complaint. Um, tell me about what happened the next day. They told me that he'd had some sort of like insulin level or like non-fatal not like a collapse but it had caused an issue um, and his insulin level but said that because I was an insulin diabetic that mainly could have been why but I you don't think, think that's so. true do you no. why, why do you not think that's the case well because he he was starved of oxygen and he was three days old how would he have insulin level so high when I'm not passing him anything to look at him as a baby when he was born he was like he was dead a picture when he was ventilated, completely different child. So how can oxygen be starved that much that he's half an hour away from death if they had to brought him out and for insulin levels to still stay in his system? So when you came back into the unit and you saw all the doctors and nurses crowded around his incubator, what, what went through your mind? Asa was my seventh pregnancy. I'd, I'd had six miscarriages. Um, a baby that had been born, even though he was early, still had hope. And I just didn't want him to go anywhere. So, you know, your hope is like, please help him. You know, make sure everything's OK. Knowing what we what all know happened. now, yeah, exactly. what, what, what do you think when you look back on it? Um, well, I know that the blood gases that were done from, from Asa, he wasn't getting anything from the placenta from me and hadn't been for a long time. So I stopped taking insulin on the day that he was born. And three days later, he's got a level of somebody who's just taken insulin. How has that happened? And the police investigated? Yes, I did get an email back from them. They investigated it a couple of times, to be honest. So in my practice, yeah, they couldn't see um, 
any evidence of malpractice at this time. And you'll always have that question mark hanging over it, won't you, unless you do get those answers? Yeah, because it's um, there's so much more. Like, as a staff member, I know that an insulin policy had been changed just before they contacted the police um, and been updated. So um, I think they may be focused on other things like air embolisms instead of other factors. But we know insulin was uh, an issue in some of the cases in some of, of the, the babies' case. yeah. cases that were brought to trial. How does that make you feel in terms of your situation? Well, it's, it's, it's really, it just makes you so angry. I'd like for it to be looked into. I'd like for it to be somebody to speak to us and for us to be able to have our view and, and just basically share what I've shared with you and say why the reasons that I think that there's a lot of families out there that need some sort of answers. And you know what, if, if ACES came back and it was there was absolutely nothing and they've done everything to go through it, that would just make my world. But if it hadn't, then she needs to, it needs to be brought to justice. How suspicious are you that she was involved? Extremely, yeah. I, was, I felt quite um, under pressure being a staff member, really, to be honest, because there's a lot of things you can and can't do, obviously. But behind the scenes, seeing things change before police get involved, that opens your eyes a little bit. Do you think because you made that complaint about let be, the next day she took out her revenge? It made me feel quite guilty because there's two babies or possible in there, including my son, who um, could have been a victims of hers. So I feel guilty a little bit that I may have drove her onto or drove something to happen, a bit of anger. Um, you just feel so lost, so I don't know, really, just it's, it's horrific to think of because you wouldn't think that nobody would be capable of that. Um, People had their suspicions? Definitely, way before Asa was born. So Asa was born in March 2016 and when alarms would go off during the night especially, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, colleagues that I know have used and are sort of commenting on, I wonder if Lucy's working tonight. I mean, it's a long time ago and you, you didn't have a very big dealing with her, but did you form an impression about her when you spoke to her, when you met her? I just didn't think, um, no, not really, I suppose, because I didn't really see much of her, but once I'd had that dealing with her, um, I was very adamant I did not want to look in after Asa. And uh, she just seemed very odd. Maybe just like a bit of a loner, I suppose. Didn't really say very much. And that's about it. Having had that dealing with her mm -hmm. and having been spoken to in that way and been so furious, what went through your mind when you heard that she'd been arrested? Straight away, like, she's got to have done it. Uh, obviously, I like to think that people aren't capable of things like that. So I tried to reserve some sort of judgment until she was charged, um, just because I'm a medical professional. Um, and I like to think people are nice. Um, but when she was charged, it's, it's almost like, you, like the survivor guilt gets a bit of you because you think, oh my God, I was so close. And that, was that a threat? Was that like, you need to look out, watch, it's just, there's so many things. You were lucky in the sense that, that Asa was, was fit and healthy and, and mm. um, is now a happy little seven-year-old. But of course, not everyone's in, in that situation who came across Lucy Letby. Yeah. So you feel almost ashamed to say how you feel because they're alive. Um, and we were lucky and we should be lucky that they're alive. And I know that, but it's like, um, it still affects you. What's your reaction now you know the guilty verdict? then a guilty verdict is brilliant for the people who have got some sort of just it doesn't bring anyone back but it gives some people some answers but it leaves many people who haven't had any answers so that needs to happen that needs to be looked into people like you like me there's many probably like me and i'm hoping that me doing this is going to help somebody and then for them to come and think maybe mine needs looking into as well because they've got every right for them to be looked into and if it doesn't come out and, it, and they're OK and they weren't involved, then great. But it needs to be looked at. 
Lindsay Artel there. She's a remarkable woman, a nursing assistant here in Chester and also a mum speaking out because she feels that there will be other parents who had a brush with Lucy Letby and uh, she wants uh, answers as to what she might have done to her son. And uh, as you heard in that report there, uh, Asa, uh, a fit, happy and healthy little boy. Um, let's bring in Tom Parminter once again. That was a chilling detail, wasn't it? Colleagues saying to each other when there was an incident on the ward, rolling their eyes almost, is Lucy Letby working tonight? Yes, and we know that senior colleagues on the neonatal unit here were raising those suspicions with the hospital management and it took months for those to be acted upon and there is this horrific situation that some of the families in this trial know that if those concerns have been intervened on then we will of course um, see uh, action there, that she would have been taken off the ward but that didn't happen quickly enough there were delays to those whistleblowing procedures. They didn't work as they should have done. And that leads to profound questions for the NHS Trust here. We know, of course, that it is a hugely distressing detail um, for the management, but it's something, while they say that the hospital of course, their thoughts are with the families. They do have to address those concerns too. They do, and uh, we have an update, Tom, uh, on that very issue. The government is going to order uh, an independent inquiry following the Lucy Letby verdict, uh, this just in from Downing Street. Uh, an inquiry is being announced into the circumstances behind the murders and attempted murders of babies at the Countess of Chester Hospital to help ensure families get the answers they need. Uh, the government goes on to say the inquiry will look at the circumstances surrounding the deaths and incidents, including how concerns raised by clinicians were dealt with. Victims' families will be invited to both engage with the shape of the inquiry, ensuring their views are heard throughout the process. That will uh, come as good news for people uh, who have been involved in this case and for others like uh, Lindsay Artel who feel that perhaps their child was harmed. The government has ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances launched to ensure vital lessons are learned and to provide answers to the parents and families impacted. It will ensure the families in this tragic case have the opportunity to engage with the inquiry, as I was saying. Um, Tom, this will be really welcome news, won't it, to all the families who have sit through, uh, who sat through more than nine months of this trial? I think it will be a mixed reception, really, from the families, because, of course, the heartache that they have been through through the course of this trial, examining the details of these awful deaths and attempts to kill babies, that is an unimaginable thing for parents to have to go through all these years after the initial trauma of losing their babies or knowing that they had suffered these inexplicable collapses as they were at the time. And so while I'm sure there will be some welcome that this, the seriousness of this case has clearly been grasped right at the very top level, but equally that will mean that once again the details of what happened in the neonatal unit here in Chester will be examined in court again and it is deeply distressing and of course there won't be one fixed position or view that the families have to that we may hear more in the course of the next day or two regarding what they think of the fact that there is going to be that huge inquiry into this but that is an indicator of just how grave Lucy Letby's crimes were here and also crucially how the fact that the consultants who were raising the flag saying look something is wrong here we are not happy with Lucy Letby continuing to work in our unit but those concerns were ignored for too long. Tom, thank you very much. The uh, Health Secretary Steve Barclay saying I would like to send my deepest sympathy to all the parents and families impacted by this horrendous case. This inquiry will seek to ensure the parents and families impacted get the answers that they need. Lucy Letby convicted of seven baby murders. This is Sky News live from the Countess of Chester Hospital after nurse Lucy Letby was found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care.
Let be the most prolific child killer in modern British history was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's Chester, please. So, good step in two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. When arrested, she tried to blame failing hospital standards. Today, victims' families describe their hurt, anger, and distress. They told me that it's staring me a lot from the test. I think that just sometimes they're a lot To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Police are now reviewing the care given to 4,000 children at the Countess of Chester Hospital and another hospital where Let Be worked. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital. And our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. Hello there, good afternoon from the Countess of Chester Hospital. I'm Jonathan Samuels. And Lucy Letby has been found guilty of murdering seven babies in her care and trying to kill six others. Letby, a nurse here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, will be sentenced on Monday. She is the most prolific child killer in modern British history and police are now reviewing the care of 4,000 other babies. Well, the government in the last few minutes has ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances behind the murders. After her conviction, a police liaison officer read out this statement on behalf of the victims' families. Words cannot effectively explain how we are feeling at this moment in time. We are quite simply stunned. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Over the past seven to eight years, we've had to go through a long, torturous and emotional journey. From losing our precious newborns and grieving their loss, seeing our children who survived, some of whom are still suffering today, to being told years later that their death or collapse might be suspicious. Nothing can prepare you for that news. Today, justice has been served and a nurse who should have been caring for our babies has been found guilty of harming them. But this justice will not take away from the extreme hurt, anger and distress that we've all had to experience. Some families did not receive the verdict that they expected and therefore it is a bittersweet result. We are heartbroken devastated, angry and feel numb. We may never truly know why this happened. Words cannot express our gratitude to the jury who have had to sit through 145 days of gruelling evidence which has led to today's verdict. We recognise that this has not been an easy task for them and we will forever be grateful for their patience and resilience throughout this incredibly difficult process. The police investigation began in 2017 and we've been supported from the very beginning by a team of experienced and dedicated family liaison officers. We want to thank these officers for everything that they've done for us. Medical experts, consultants, doctors and nursing staff have all given evidence at court, which at times has been extremely harrowing and distressing for us to listen to. However, we recognise the determination and commitment that each witness has shown in ensuring that the truth was told. We acknowledge that the evidence given by each of them has been key in securing today's verdict. Finally, we would like to acknowledge and thank the investigation team and more recently the prosecution team who've led the trial to a successful conclusion. The search for the truth has remained at the forefront of everyone's minds and we will forever be grateful for this. We would now ask for time in peace to process what has happened as we come to terms with today's verdict. 
I would now also like to read out a statement on behalf of the team of family liaison officers who've worked as part of Operation Hummingbird. On behalf of our team, dedicated family liaison officers, I would like to thank all of the families for the immense fortitude and extreme resilience that they've shown over the years. They have acted with dignity and reservedness during a very long trial, whilst hearing the most horrendous evidence. We are all extremely humbled by them. I hope that the support that we've provided to all of the families has been of some comfort to them during an incredibly difficult period. We have worked closely alongside His Majesty's Court Service to ensure that the families have been able to watch court proceedings in Manchester as well as remotely over the past 10 months. This has assisted them greatly in being able to view the trial with more ease. We would like to thank court staff for all their help with this. Whilst today's verdict can by no means relieve the suffering that families have gone through and are still going through, we hope that will bring them some comfort. Our thoughts remain with you all. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, Janet Moore, the family liaison coordinator, and just to her right was DCI Nicola Evans, who helped uh, uh, bring this investigation to trial. She was instrumental, and at times during that statement, you could see that she was uh, visibly upset uh, and also emotional. Um, the breaking news this hour, the government has ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances behind these uh, awful, awful murders and attempted murders. Number 10 saying it's been launched to ensure vital lessons are learned and to provide answers to the parents and families impacted. The inquiry will investigate the wider circumstances about what happened here at the Countess of Chester Hospital. And uh, as we heard there from Janet Moore, the distress that the families have felt over the last few years has been quite, quite remarkable. And the work that family liaison officers have done has been really fantastic in comforting them throughout this whole difficult period and explaining every step of the way at what is happening. Well, we are hearing that Lucy Letby has now left the court in Manchester for the last time. Let's go to our correspondent, Katerina Vitozzi, who is there for us. Uh, Katerina, what happened as we learnt about all the verdicts today? Lucy Letby refusing to be in the courtroom, refusing to come up from her cell. Yes, that's right. This was a message that was passed to the court via her defence team. Uh, and we can now report that these verdicts were delivered over the course of several days. At first, Lucy Letby was present in court to hear that she had been found guilty of some of the counts. Uh, but then, as more and more verdicts were delivered, she simply refused to come up from the cells, as you say, although she was present in court today, arriving as normal and leaving just in the last few minutes. Uh, by a police van and the judge being made aware that she now will no longer appear in court. She won't be here for sentencing and I think that will be extremely difficult and very distressing uh, for the families of the victims who themselves have had to endure hearing the harrowing final moments of their babies' lives or the moments that their babies fell violently and unexpectedly unwell and needing life-saving care. They have been in court to hear that distressing detail and now they will be denied the opportunity to see Lucy Letby receive whatever sentence it might be that she receives on Monday. We have, of course, ourselves been speaking uh, with some of the families affected in this case. We've spoken to the parents of two twin boys who Lucy Letby tried to kill in April 2016. And they gave us a glimpse of what it's been like for them over the past 10 months, that's nine months of trial, and then 110 hours of jury deliberation, what it's been like to be in court, to hear those details, and then to have to wait for such an extremely long time to hear the outcome of the jury's decisions and they described it to press publicly for the very first time as utter hell. They said it was horrendous to hear Lucy Letby in the dock giving witness, giving her uh, testimony, 
denying repeatedly and vigorously, denying that she hurt their babies and that she killed other babies, described, as I say, as utter hell by the father of these, ch child, these children, boys, referred to in court as child L and M. They said it has been utterly horrendous. It has pushed them to their physical and their mental limits. They say it is something from which they will never recover, and I think that is a sentiment reflected in the emotional response we saw from all of the families in the courtroom as they heard those verdicts being delivered. We saw individual parents dissolving in tears. We saw families comforting each other, united by these awful crimes. These were families who were strangers to each other when their children were on the neonatal unit between June 2015 and June 2016, but now they have been united in this trial, during this trial, in an event that they will never forget, and I think it will be something that will linger in the public memory for a very, very long time, because now, following these verdicts today, Lucy Letby bears this horrific title as the UK's most prolific child serial killer of modern British history, as you'll see now in my report. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's Chesh, please. Okay, Stephanie, two seconds. Oh, yes? Yeah, thank you. This arrest led to the conviction of a killer. They told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I've been linked to some deaths there for a lot of them. Nurse Lucy Letby, now the UK's most prolific child murderer of modern times. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets is not going to be enough. Hiding her crimes behind a smile and an NHS badge, we can now reveal what colleagues suspected all along. When alarms would go off, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, I wonder if Lucy is working tonight. Lucy Letby was nearly 22 when she started working here at the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal ward. Originally from Hereford, she'd been here for around four years when the attacks involved in this case began. It's about a 20-minute walk from where Lucy Letby lived to the ward where she worked, and over many months, the jury has heard difficult and distressing detail about what happened in that hospital between June 2015 and June 2016, about how, during that time, seven babies died, five boys and two girls, and about how ten other children suddenly collapsed and needed life-saving care. This used to be nursery one, also coined the hot room. This video was taken of the ward where Lucy Letby worked. It's where a jury agreed she killed children in her care. She used injections of insulin, excessive air and milk, even physical assault to make babies sick, collapse and die. On the 9th of April, she was working here in Nursery One. Twin brothers, child L and M, were here too. Speaking to media for the very first time, the boy's parents remember the moment baby M collapsed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image, I'll never forget. When it went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like, like a rag doll, really. He was just crying, crying. And I, I said, oh, my God, what happened? And I was just praying to God, saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first-time parents. We didn't know what was going on. In fact, what they were seeing was the aftermath of Letby's attack. She had tried to kill both boys within hours of each other. She was standing calm and, and cool. And what I can remember was, at the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Police first arrested and then questioned Lucy Letby in 2018. Okay, just take a seat in there for me, Lucy. I'll move that seat forward a bit. Sure. Yeah, I just had knee surgery. So oh, right, OK. <coughs> they told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I've been linked to somebody that's there for a lot of them. 
did you have any concerns that there was a rise in the mortality rate? Yes. Lucy Letby has always denied every charge against her. I think we don't just notice as a, as a team in general, the nursing staff, that this was a rise compared to previous years. Behind that very angelic smile, there was a much darker side to her personality. She completely perverted her learning and she weaponised whatever was at her disposal. Uh, she betrayed the trust and uh, the, the, the faith that families had. You know, when um, they, she was telling them something, they would just accept it as correct. But over this trial, we've learnt that colleagues did have suspicions well over a year before police were called in by hospital bosses. Lindsay Artell was a nurse at the Countess of Chester. When alarms would go off, during the night especially, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, colleagues that I know have used, I wonder if Lucy's working tonight. And that's exactly how it was. So people knew exactly what was going on. We've contacted the hospital for comment, but Lindsay and her husband also believe Lucy Letby attacked their son, Asa, when he was born premature and cared for on the ward. Cheshire police say they are already investigating if Lucy Letby hurt other babies over the rest of her career. But there remains a key question. Why Lucy Letby did this? I don't know whether we will ever be able to answer that question, and only Lucy Letby can answer that. As a police officer, that's really hard to take, and it must be really difficult for the families to accept that we might never have the answers to why this has happened. Some also can't accept why Lucy Letby wasn't stopped earlier. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. Lucy Letby's job was to cure. Instead, she killed and attacked the most vulnerable, her victims so tiny, so fragile, they could be carried in just one hand. Katrina Vitozzi, Sky News. Well, you heard from, in my report just there, DCI Nicola Evans, who was the Deputy Senior Investigating Officer for Cheshire Police, as part of what is known as Operation Hummingbird, which is the investigation into these attacks and murders by Lucy Letby. And we spoke with her just a few weeks ago. She was incredibly frank, incredibly honest about the toll this has taken on all of the officers involved in this case, a case which began with a simple letter in 2017 written by bosses at the Countess of Chester Hospital and sent to Cheshire Police saying, we have seen a recent spike in the number of deaths on the neonatal ward. Do you think this is something we, you as a police force now need to investigate? And that letter started a chain of events which lead us today to hear outside Manchester Crown Court reporting that Lucy Letby is found guilty of the murder of seven babies and the attempted murder of six others. And DCI Nicola Evans also made a statement on the steps outside Manchester Crown Court today, visibly upset over not only the verdicts that have been received and the emotion that she no doubt has seen in the courtroom. She has been present in the courtroom every single day alongside families of the victims involved in this case. And then standing just a few metres behind me outside Manchester Crown Court a short while ago, she had this to say. This has been a long and emotional journey for all of the families involved in this case. I speak on behalf of the entire prosecution team when I say that all of their babies will forever be in our hearts. I would like to thank all of the families in this case for their exceptional resilience and strength throughout this entire investigation. Their composure and their dignity during this trial has been truly overwhelming. The investigation into the circumstances surrounding this case started in May 2017. Since that time, 
hundreds of witnesses have been spoken to by a team of dedicated detectives. Many of those witnesses have returned to court on numerous occasions to give evidence. Without their honesty and their support, the families would not have received the justice that they have received today. I cannot begin to imagine how the families in this case feel today. I just hope that the, today's verdicts bring all of them some peace of mind for the future and that we have answered some of the questions that they were looking for. Cheshire Constabulary will continue to support all of the families in this case in the coming days and weeks ahead. There will be a period of reflection as everybody comes to terms with what they've experienced here today. We also now know from Cheshire Constabulary that they are investigating the rest of Lucy Letby's career. The attacks involved in this case happened between June 2015 and June 2016 when she was on the neo Nesta hospital, but police telling us that they are now reflecting and analysing and investigating the other years that she was working at the hospital before that. She started uh, just at the start of 2012 at the Countess of Chester Hospital, so they will be looking at those intervening years uh, between 2012 and 2015. She also uh, went on placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital, Cheshire Police confirming that they would also be looking at the care or what happened to the babies in her care during her time at both those hospitals and I thought it was extremely poignant just listening back to that interview uh, from DCI Nicola Evans that she put as much emphasis as she could on the families of the victims in this case of course that is the right focus for now but it's also worth reflecting on the officers involved when we spoke with Nicola Evans she said this is an investigation that officers, including herself and including uh, the senior investigation officer, that they wouldn't be the same people at the end of this as they were going into it. This is an investigation, the scale and size and unimaginable horror of which, as an investigating team, they have never had to face before. And now today they stand outside Manchester Crown Court talking about a woman, a nurse, who is in her mid-20s, when she committed acts that make her now the UK's most prolific child serial killer of modern British history. Katerina at Manchester Crown Court, thank you very much indeed. Well, Lucy Letby had no previous convictions. She had no previous brush with police or the law. There was no history of violence, no history of mental illness. Indeed, she was seen as a model nurse here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, so much so that she was even the face of the charitable campaign to raise three million pounds over three years to help uh, refurbish and rebuild the neonatal unit here. That photograph that we've seen so many times of her holding up a tiny baby grow was part of that campaign. In an interview with a local paper at the time, she said, I enjoy seeing babies progress and supporting their families. Well, today the government has ordered an independent inquiry following those Lucy Letby verdicts. In a statement, the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, had the following to say. I would like to send my deepest sympathy to all the parents and families impacted by this horrendous case. This inquiry will seek to ensure the parents and families impacted get the answers they need. I am determined their voices are heard and they are involved in shaping the scope of the inquiry should they wish to do so. He went on to say, following on from the work already underway by NHS England, it will help us identify where and how patient safety standards fail to be met and ensure mothers and their partners rightly have faith in our healthcare system. Well, we've also had a statement from Dame Ruth May, Chief Nursing Officer for England. She said, Lucy Letby committed appalling crimes that were a terrible betrayal of the trust placed in her and our thoughts are with the families affected who have experienced pain and suffering that few of us 
can imagine. Uh, she went on to say colleagues within the nursing profession and across the health service have been shocked and sickened to learn what she did. Actions beyond belief to the nurses and staff working so hard to save lives and care for patients. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to express our profound apologies to the families for all they have been through. The NHS is fully committed to doing everything we can to prevent anything like this ever happening again. And we welcome the independent inquiry announced by the Department of Health and Social Care to help ensure we learn every possible lesson from this awful case. So uh, a huge amount of reaction coming in, as you can see, uh, to these uh, guilty verdicts. Uh, Sky correspondent Tom Parmenter is here. He's been following this case now for many months, indeed, many years, Tom. Um, we're hearing a lot today from uh, the government, from NHS managers, from the very people that run this hospital. What do you think the reaction will be of the families to the news that there is now going to be a public inquiry? Evidence is going to be poured, poured all over once again. It is a marker of the gravity of this case, just how quickly Downing Street announced that uh, an hour or two after the news from the court in Manchester of the guilty verdicts in relation to Lucy Letby's crimes. Uh, it is something that I'm sure the families in some instances will welcome, but it will also have a degree of concern around because they have been through the most unimaginable seven years, culminating in the intensity of a criminal trial where the care of their babies and the sabotage of their treatment and in some cases the murder of their children has been scrutinised in intense detail and it's been very hard for the police, the court staff, but of course, most intensely, those families who have got to this point today, but now know that the cases will be looked at once again in an independent inquiry to try to answer some of the questions that the court case has not been able to work out. The court case has established the guilt of Lucy Letby and the majority of the charges that she faced, but it does not unravel the concerns that were raised by her colleagues. This went on for a 12-month period in the building behind us here at the Countess of Chester. And colleagues were suspicious. They were thinking, is Lucy Letby connected to the fact that we have more babies collapsing and more babies dying than we should have? And they were told quite explicitly, the hospital management, that they were, some of her colleagues, uncomfortable with Lucy Letby working on the neonatal unit because of this pattern of babies collapsing when she was in charge of them. And there is this awful scenario where some of the families know that if those whistleblowing procedures had worked, if she had been taken away from her frontline role more quickly, that their babies would not have been attacked and they would still be here today as seven-year-olds enjoying primary school and doing everything that seven-year-olds should be doing. And that chance of life was snubbed by the actions of Lucy Letby. And she used a variety of techniques and methods to sabotage the care here. And we've heard in the last hour from the medical director here at the Countess of Chester Hospital about their feelings as a trust, about this cloud of suspicion that has hung over this hospital for so many years now and has finally got to the point where they know conclusively that one of their own one of the neonatal nurses was responsible for the deaths of seven babies in the neonatal unit here at Chester. This is what the medical director, Nigel Scorn, told us a short time ago. I speak for the whole trust when I say how deeply saddened and appalled we are at Lucy Letby's crimes. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital. And our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. We cannot begin to understand what they have been through. This case has had a profound impact on our patients and our local community and also our staff, who come to work every day determined to provide safe and high quality care for all of our patients. Our staff are devastated by what has happened 
and we are committed to ensuring that lessons continue to be learned. We are grateful for the cooperation of our staff, especially those that have maintained the utmost professionalism whilst giving evidence in this trial, sometimes on multiple occasions. We will continue to support them and our other staff to ensure that they receive the care and the support that they need. We would like to extend our thanks to Cheshire Police for their extensive investigation and the work they did to bring this case to trial. We would also like to thank them for the comprehensive support that they have provided to all the families involved. Since Lucy Letby worked at our hospital, we have made significant changes to our services. And I want to provide reassurance to every patient that may access our services, that they can have confidence in the care that they will receive. Finally, and most importantly, our thoughts are with all the families and loved ones at this very difficult time. Tom, so much wasn't said in that statement from uh, the manager here at the hospital, the director, but we have been hearing from some of the consultants involved, and certainly one of the consultants who gave evidence in this trial, and the consultant who was one of the first to, to blow the whistle. What's he been saying? Well, yeah, you're right. There were a number of clinicians inside the unit here where Lucy Letby was working who were suspicious of what she was doing and had concerns that they did escalate to management. They did the right thing. And while everyone feels rightly hugely upset by this case and devastated by it, there is also simmering anger among some of those members of staff who did the right thing, tried to intervene and were let down, in their view, by the management. And Dr Ravi Jairam is one of those consultants who tried to raise those concerns. He gave evidence during the trial to that effect. And he has said uh, that, that there is a long history of whistleblowers who raise concerns in the NHS not only being ignored, but then being portrayed as the problem, sometimes to the point that their careers are being destroyed. What happened here was history repeating itself, but the patient safety issue that was ignored was beyond anything that the NHS has tried previously to cover up. There needs to be a fundamental change in the culture and governance of NHS institutions, and it should start right now. And while, of course, we are familiar with maternity scandals at other hospitals, uh, this is clearly markedly different because there was a rogue nurse inflicting harm on babies. This wasn't a, 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 a system that was caring poorly for babies. It was a rogue nurse within it. I think it's important to remember that distinction. Nonetheless, there are systemic failures here as well as a nurse who was harming babies. Big questions for the Trust and that, of course, will form part of that independent inquiry that the government have confirmed this afternoon. Yeah, interesting. Dr Ravi Jaram there talking about whistleblowing within the NHS. There were 25,000 cases of whistleblowing over the last year alone uh, in uh, the National Health Service. Tom, for now, thank you very much. Um, well, you may be wondering why we're not mentioning the names of the babies who've been affected in this case, and that's because the judge has uh, said that they must be kept anonymous for life, uh, protecting their identities, making sure that the grief of the parents uh, isn't prolonged any more than it is already going to be. But of course it is the babies that we're thinking about today. And I just want to tell you about three triplets that were uh, born here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, triplets that Lucy Letby uh, came in contact with. Uh, she'd been on holiday to Ibiza and she texted a colleague saying that she was going to be back on the ward with a bang. This was towards the end of her criminal activity. She was accused in court of killing babies O and P, two of those triplets. Baby O was stable and then had a remarkable deterioration. Now, afterwards, a pathologist said he'd suffered an impact injury, like a car crash. Plus, there was air in his bloodstream. As doctors tried to resuscitate him, they were in a state of panic at his bedside. The very next day, another of the triplets 
was attacked by Letby, waiting to be transferred to another hospital. It was a similar cause, an injection of air. At this stage, the parents begged for their remaining triplet, the survivor, to be moved. Their dad said, there's no way he's staying at this hospital. You've got to take him. Otherwise, we are going to take him ourselves. Ongoing coverage here on Sky News. Hello again, welcome back. Uh, we are live outside the Countess of Chester Hospital after neonatal nurse Lucy Letby was found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care. Letby, the most prolific child killer in modern history, was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies. Well, the government has ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances behind the murders which took place here and I'm joined now by our political correspondent Liz Bates. Uh, Liz, what's the Health Secretary had to say? Um, well, first of all, the Health Secretary, like many uh, MPs, uh, politicians from across the political spectrum, has uh, tweeted today his deepest sympathies for the families involved uh, in this case, understandably. He has also, Steve Barclay, uh, announced an, an independent inquiry uh, following the Lucy Letby verdict. This is to, uh, in, in this government statement that we've had within the last hour, uh, it says to help ensure families get the answer that they, the answers that they need. Of course, there are many questions uh, raised uh, in this case beyond the horrific details uh, within it. There are also questions for, I think, senior figures 
in the NHS, uh, why they uh, weren't more responsive to whistleblowers and when concerns uh, were raised. I think that will be a huge uh, part of, of this inquiry. It says it will look at the circumstances surrounding the deaths and incidents, including how concerns ra uh, raised by clinicians were dealt with. Victims' families, it says, will be invited to both engage with and shape the inquiry, ensuring their views are heard uh, throughout the process. Uh, it also says more broadly, the government is committed to making the NHS one of the safest places in the world to give birth, and every single parent across the country deserves to feel confident that their babies are safe and receiving world-class treatment. So I think part of this is to, of course, give the families that the, the answers that they deserve, but more broadly to reassure the public uh, that the NHS uh, is, has properly learned the lessons uh, from this case. For the families in particular, it also says the police have arrangements in place to appropriately support them, and uh, including psychological support and, fams and, and family liaison officers. I think uh, this inquiry will undoubtedly get cross-party uh, support uh, from MPs uh, from all political parties. In, in terms of who will head it up and the terms of the inquiry, uh, the government has said today a chair will be appointed and we will publish the inquiry's proposed terms of reference, setting out the scope of the work in due course. So that's the independent inquiry that the government has announced today. Uh, we've also had a statement as well on something uh, uh, slightly different from the Ministry of Justice. I think this is in response to the fact that Lucy Letby didn't turn up uh, for to court for every uh, verdict that was delivered, and the expectation is that she won't turn up either in, in court for the sentencing. A Ministry of Justice spokesman has said today the Lord Chancellor has been clear he wants victim t victims to see justice delivered and for all those found guilty to hear society's condemnation at their sentencing hearing. Defendants can already be ordered by a judge to attend court with those who fail facing up to two years in prison. So that is the uh, situation as it stands. That's the rule as it stands. A person can be ordered by a judge to attend court, but if they don't, and if they don't obey, they can be found in contempt of court and their sentence can be extended. But I think the plan is uh, to toughen those rules up even further, that new legislation on the non-attendance of sentencing hearing will also be introduced. Uh, but of course, that won't be in time for the sentencing of Lucy Letby uh, next week. And uh, I think that could uh, be another uh, difficult moment, of course, for families who have already experienced uh, so much horrific, unimaginable trauma. That's right, uh, Liz. Thank you very much. Liz Bates there in Westminster. And as Liz was saying, Lucy Letby due to be sentenced at 10 a.m. in uh, Manchester on uh, Monday morning. So there will be an independent inquiry and that will, I'm sure, provoke uh, mixed uh, response from the families of the victims here. Yes, they'll be pleased that uh, many of their unanswered questions may well get answered in what will be uh, a very uh, a complex and forensic inquiry, but at the same time, if they thought that uh, they could move on after today and carry on with the grieving process, well, sadly, of course, it's all going to be gone through again in an inquiry which will take many months, probably many years. Uh, it really has been a case that has taken 10 months in trial with the jury having deliberated the 22 counts from well over 100 hours and as I've been saying let me will be sentenced on Monday morning well the Sky News Daily podcast has been speaking to our correspondent Katerina Vitozzi about what it's been like to cover the case Neil Patterson that joins us now from the Sky News podcast studio with more on what will be in that episode Neil uh, Jonathan, look, you know, we've covered some stories in our time. I'm not sure that we've ever covered anything quite like this. And it is on occasions like this that I think the podcast can, can do a bit of a service. Those reporting restrictions that you were mentioning, the lifting of them means that there's this huge amount of information that has just been released into the public domain. And on today's episode, we're, we're going to try and make sense of it with a number of the people most closely associated with the case, some of whom we've been seeing on our screens today. Uh, DCI Nicola Evans, DS Paul Hughes, of course, leading up the investigation, Pascal Jones from the, the Crown Prosecution Service, uh, but also a former colleague of Lucy Letby and indeed the parents of baby 
Ladies L and M Letby uh, was found guilty uh, of their attempted murder. Now, I've said this on social media, you don't need to be a parent to, to feel utter revulsion at Letby's crimes. But, but, you know, for those of you who are, there is a big question in our mind. Why on earth did she do this? There is another big question in all of our minds as well. I mean, why didn't anyone notice? And, and when concerns were raised, why were those concerns not acted upon? That is one of the topics that we examine in some depth today, uh, as you mentioned, with our correspondent, uh, Katerina Vitozzi. So although colleagues may have had suspicions, I think it's still such a difficult thing to countenance that you, someone would go into this profession, which is all about care, it's all about curing and helping, that someone would cross the line to do something criminal to the most vulnerable people, the most, these children that the prosecution said so small they could fit in one hand. Um, I think it is the most unbelievable betrayal of that trust. And of course the, the worst thing is the answers to those uh, fundamental questions we may never get satisfactory answers to. Uh, all that and more coming up on The Daily. In terms of a motive, only Lucy Letby can answer that. Neil, thank you very much. And you can scan the QR code on your screen right now in order to subscribe to the Sky News Daily podcast. That new episode will be in your feeds uh, later on this evening. And you can also listen on the Sky News app as well. Well, we can now show you pictures of the prison van leaving Manchester Crown Court. Lucy Letby inside, uh, returning to her jail cell today. She refused to come into the courtroom to listen as those final verdicts uh, were delivered. Uh, she said that she would not leave her cell in the, uh, uh, in the bowels of the court and come up to the courtroom. Today, she has been convicted of murdering seven babies and attempting to kill six others here at the Countess of Chester Hospital. in the world. I'm Alex Crawford and I'm Sky's special correspondent based in Istanbul. This is going to be the biggest party Tripoli has ever seen. That's it. it, it got us then. There's a lot of action going on. A lot of heat going on still. We aim to be the best and the most trusted place in news. at all, a lot of them extremely thin and very frail. Look at her arms, I can put my entire hand round. This is the cocktail of drugs which the doctors at this hospital have been giving their coronavirus patients. Made for people who want clarity in an uncertain world. Mother Nature is, can be vicious, absolutely savage. I can't imagine how much plastic is lying at the bottom of this huge lake. Whoa! <laughs> close and personal with the rhino. This is what makes the job so fantastic.
Hello again. Well, the parents of one of the babies which Lucy Letby attempted to murder has told Sky News that she put their family through hell and what she did is going to affect them for the rest of their lives. Now, to protect the identity of the parents, Sky News has allowed them to speak anonymously, voiced by actors. So how are you feeling at the moment with everything that you've been through over the last few weeks? Me personally, it's been very difficult very mentally and physically draining. Also working at the same time, getting time off work, it's been, been challenging. And what has been the most difficult part of this trial for you? Previously, we didn't know our other child was involved with the attempted murder. We knew about Baby M, what happened on the 9th of April 2016. And until then we were very, very happy. Oh, we were ecstatic, first time parents. We were happy and knew everything was as good as it could have been at that time. And then just tell me when you suddenly realised things were going to go wrong. Well, on the Saturday the 9th of April, we'd come down with my parents to see the boys. Everything was going well. We held the boys. We went back upstairs because my wife was in the ward upstairs and then within 10, 15 minutes, a nurse is coming charging upstairs saying, you need to come back down. And I was there first because my wife was still in bed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. The image that I saw was just horrendous. That image I'll never forget because it's on the brain. When I went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like, like a rag doll, really. One of the nurses, Mary Griffiths, said to me, I've not done anything, I've not done anything. And, and Lucy was behind her and I was just praying to God saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? And then after 30 minutes, he recovered. How did you feel at that point? I was just, I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first-time parents. We didn't know what was going on. What did you see of Lucy Letby at that point? She was just standing like that. How was she standing? Very calm and cool. At the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed after the incident happened. I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Did you suspect Lucy Letby at any point in that time? No, not at that time. She was very cool, calm, calculated and a criminal-minded lady, but we didn't notice anything at the time. We didn't know anything even afterwards until the police came knocking. When the police came to our house and told us, your second child is involved with Lucy, we were shocked and we said we didn't know about Baby L. Why had they not told us about Baby L? We did know about Baby M, but they hadn't told us about Baby L. So they didn't tell you that he had gone into any difficulty at all? No, not the insulin and all the blood sugars and all that. We didn't know anything about that until the police came. And how did you feel when you heard that? We just couldn't believe it because we already we knew about Baby M and we accepted that bit. But we didn't know what baby Elle had gone through the night before. It was just unbelievable. We couldn't believe it. When you have heard Lucy Letby talk in court time and time again, denying she harmed any babies... I feel very sick of her. Oh, my God. I, I go home with a headache. I have to take paracetamol every day when I go home just because I have to listen to her lie and lie and lie. And I say now, enough. Don't tell lies, please. When you've sat there in the dock and taken the oath, I think just please say everything that's right and, and true. So why are you telling lies? What has Lucy let be taken from your family? Everything. She took everything. Our joy, happiness. I'm not the same person I was before. I was happy-go-lucky, you know, go with the flow, always smiling. But now I've become reserved, so like in the shell kind of thing. I'm and there's no doubt it's going to affect me for the rest of my life. There's no way you can get away from it. It's been hell, to be honest. Very, very horrendous. What has it meant for you to know that Lucy Letby has been able to work on a unit for years with people knowing they were concerned about her and knowing what it's done to your family and to so many other families? How does it feel to know that that has happened and been allowed to happen? It's hard to put into words just how it could have gone on so long, why it went on so long. These are the answers we need. But that's a different part of the investigation. 
We have to wait for the hospital to answer those questions, but it could have been stopped. That's the fact. Do you think the hospital should have done more to get Lucy Letby off the unit? Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Why did they wait until 2016? Do you think that some babies could have survived? I think so, yeah. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. What has life been like day to day? Has she caused any long life-changing injuries to your sons? As far as we know, baby M did have a scan and the doctors did say that one part of his brain is damaged permanently. So he might may deviate from his peers and stuff. At the moment, if you look at him, you wouldn't think any differently, just like a normal child. So it's something we'll just have to keep monitoring over the years as the years progress. Is that something you're worrying about every day? Yeah. Yes. How let down do you feel by the hospital? Very, very let down. They could have stopped it. They could have done it a lot earlier. And they need to be held accountable as well. Obviously, I know they didn't know there was a poisoner at work, and it's difficult to prove that. But the doctors did speak up. The doctors spoke up in 2015. They should have acted on that. If you were to describe Lucy Letby, what does she mean to you? To me, nothing. She means nothing. Just an evil person. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. And she already proved with her note, she wrote, I am evil and did it with a purpose. We see through her note. The green note, the yellow note. So she proved her note already. We saw it. She said, I'm evil. How does Lucy Letby being found guilty provide justice for you? What does it mean for you? It provides a bit of closure. Um, not completely, but at least a bit of closure that they've got the right person and she's going to be punished for it. I'll be very happy. If the punishment is proper and the proper sentence, then I would be very happy. Is there any sentence that will justify what you've been through and what your sons have been through? Life sentence. I want a life sentence. But it's not going to do justice, no matter what. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets is not going to be enough. It will be justice, but it won't be enough. Whatever the sentence comes. So upsetting to listen to the parents there of twins. Lucy Letby has been found guilty of their attempted murder. The father saying, how could it have gone on so long? It could have been stopped. Stay with us.
This is Sky News live from the Countess of Chester Hospital after nurse Lucy Letby was found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care. Let be the most prolific child killer in modern British history, was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies. Hello, Lucy, is this? Yes. Hello, my name's in Chester, please. So, please step in two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. When arrested, she tried to blame failing standards at the hospital. Today, victims' families described their hurt, anger and distress. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Police are now reviewing the care given to 4,000 children as the government announces an independent inquiry and the hospital issues an apology. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital and our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. Letby will be sentenced on Monday with prosecutors now deciding if they'll pursue a retrial on six other counts of attempted murder. Hello there, good afternoon. Lucy Letby has been found guilty of murdering seven babies in her care and trying to kill six others. Letby, a nurse here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, will be sentenced on Monday. She is the most prolific child killer in modern British history and police are now reviewing the care of 4,000 other babies. Well, today the government has ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances behind the murders. Our North of England correspondent, Katerina Vitozzi, reports. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's in Chester, please. Look, please step in two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. This arrest led to the conviction of a killer. You told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I feel linked to somebody. So Nurse Lucy Letby, now the UK's most prolific child murderer of modern times. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets is not going to be enough. Hiding her crimes behind a smile and an NHS badge, we can now reveal what colleagues suspected all along. When alarms would go off, um, there would be... Um, a phrase that people would use, I wonder if Lucy is working tonight. Lucy Letby was nearly 22 when she started working here at the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal ward. Originally from Hereford, she'd been here for around four years when the attacks involved in this case began. It's about a 20 minute walk from where Lucy Letby lived to the ward where she worked. And over many months, the jury has heard difficult and distressing detail about what happened in that hospital between June 2015 and June 2016, about how during that time seven babies died, five boys and two girls, and about how ten other children suddenly collapsed and needed life-saving care. This used to be nursery one, also coined the hot room. This video was taken of the ward where Lucy Letby worked. It's where a jury agreed she killed children in her care. She used injections of insulin, excessive air and milk, even physical assault to make babies sick, collapse and die. On the 9th of April, she was working here in Nursery One. Twin brothers, child L and M, were here too. Speaking to media for the very first time, the boy's parents remember the moment baby M collapsed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image, I'll never forget. When I went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like, like a rag doll, really. He was just crying, crying. And I, I said, oh, my God, what happened? And I was just praying to God, saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? I was just full of the tears. 
I didn't know what to think. We're first time parents. We didn't know what was going on. In fact, what they were seeing was the aftermath of Letby's attack. She had tried to kill both boys within hours of each other. She was standing calm and, and cool. And what I can remember was at the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Police first arrested and then questioned Lucy Letby in 2018. You have to take a seat in there for me, Lucy. I'll move that seat forward a bit. Sure. Yeah, I just had knee surgery. So. Oh, right, OK. <coughs> they told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I feel linked to somebody that was there for a lot of them. Did you have any concerns that there was a rise in the mortality rate? Yes. Lucy Letby has always denied every charge against her. I think we don't just notice as a, as a team in general, the nursing staff, that this was a rise compared to previous years. Behind that very angelic smile, there was a much darker side to her personality. She completely perverted her learning and she weaponised whatever was at her disposal. Uh, she betrayed the trust and uh, the, the, the faith that families had. You know, when um, they, she was telling them something, they would just accept it as correct. But over this trial, we've learnt that colleagues did have suspicions well over a year before police were called in by hospital bosses. Lindsay Artell was a nurse at the Countess of Chester. When alarms would go off, during the night especially, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, colleagues that I know have used, I wonder if Lucy is working tonight. And that's exactly how it was. So people knew exactly what was going on. We've contacted the hospital for comment, but Lindsay and her husband also believe Lucy Letby attacked their son, Asa, when he was born premature and cared for on the ward. Cheshire police say they are already investigating if Lucy Letby hurt other babies over the rest of her career. But there remains a key question. Why Lucy Letby did this? I don't know whether we will ever be able to answer that question and only Lucy Letby can answer that. As a police officer, that's really hard to take and it must be really difficult for the families to accept that we might never have the answers to why this has happened. Some also can't accept why Lucy Letby wasn't stopped earlier. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. Lucy Letby's job was to cure. Instead, she killed and attacked the most vulnerable, her victims so tiny, so fragile, they could be carried in just one hand. Catherine Vitozzi, Sky News. And, of course, uh, all of our thoughts today are with the families of those little tiny victims. Parents in 2015 and 2016 came here to the unit behind me to uh, give birth, to bring a new life into the world full of excitement and hope uh, and left in the most uh, unimaginable of circumstances. Now, the judge has ordered that the victims, the little babies, and indeed their parents are kept anonymous. It's all part of a duty of care. And after Lucy Letby's conviction today, it was a police liaison officer who read out a statement on behalf of them. Words cannot effectively explain how we are feeling at this moment in time. We are quite simply stunned. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Over the past seven to eight years, we've had to go through a long, torturous and emotional journey. From losing our precious newborns and grieving their loss, seeing our children who survived, some of whom are still suffering today to being told years later that their death or collapse might be suspicious. 
nothing can prepare you for that news. Today, justice has been served and a nurse who should have been caring for our babies has been found guilty of harming them. But this justice will not take away from the extreme hurt, anger and distress that we've all had to experience. Uh, that was uh, Janet Moore from Cheshire Constabulary, the person who coordinated all those family liaison officers, uh, police officers who have such an important role guiding families through uh, the intricacies of the police investigation and indeed through the trial which lasted around nine months. Well, standing next to Janet Moore was the Deputy Senior Investigating Officer, DCI Nicola Evans. This has been a long and emotional journey for all of the families involved in this case. I speak on behalf of the entire prosecution team when I say that all of their babies will forever be in our hearts. I would like to thank all of the families in this case for their exceptional resilience and strength throughout this entire investigation. Their composure and their dignity during this trial has been truly overwhelming. The investigation into the circumstances surrounding this case started in May 2017. Since that time, hundreds of witnesses have been spoken to by a team of dedicated detectives. Many of those witnesses have returned to court on numerous occasions to give evidence. Without their honesty and their support, the families would not have received the justice that they have received today. I cannot begin to imagine how the families in this case feel today. I just hope that the, today's verdicts bring all of them some peace of mind for the future and that we have answered some of the questions that they were looking for. Cheshire Constabulary will continue to support all of the families in this case in the coming days and weeks ahead. There will be a period of reflection as everybody comes to terms with what they've experienced here today. Uh, DCI Nicola Evans there, uh, one of the people who was leading Operation Hummingbird, this huge, complex and forensic investigation which was carried out over a number of years. 70 officers and civilian staff working together. Uh, 32,000 pages of evidence were gathered, medical records running into thousands of pages as well. 2,000 people spoken to, 250 identified as potential witnesses and that trial as we know has come to an end but one question which still remains unanswered is why did she do this our correspondent Tom Parmenter is with me there are a, a number of suggestions for motive but they are just that that perhaps she got some sort of thrill uh, carrying out what she did uh, that she wanted to be noticed as someone who was good at caring for grieving parents uh, that she had a crush on a colleague and wanted his attention but the uh, 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 the truth is we will never know it is an appalling case and as distressing is that, that that feeling of distress is of course most intent around the families but the whole hospital community here in chester the wider community the patients who use this hospital and more widely across the country this will horrify people what happened here over a period of 12 months and during the trial, they looked at those issues that you mentioned around motive as to why would a relatively ordinary seeming woman in her mid-twenties go about killing children under her care. She has been described to us by Cheshire Constabulary as a beige individual, someone who didn't particularly stand out. She was an only child, grew up in Hereford, moved here to Chester to learn how to become a nurse and then became a nurse at this hospital. And she had a pretty unremarkable life. She lived a mile or so away from this hospital, had a couple of cats, socialized with friends, no long-term partner. And there was no outward sign that this was someone who would go on to become 
the worst child killer of modern times in the UK, which is now what she is. And there are so many questions that the trust here will face in the oncoming independent inquiry into this because they were told, the management at the time were told by colleagues that something was wrong, that Lucy Letby was potentially harming babies and the action was not quick enough. And we know that families uh, could have been prevented from that horrendous heartache if action had been taken sooner, if those very first warning signs had been acted upon properly. And earlier we heard from the medical director here at the Countess of Chester Hospital about the hospital's response to today's news from court. I speak for the whole trust when I say how deeply saddened and appalled we are at Lucy Letby's crimes. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital. And our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. We cannot begin to understand what they have been through. This case has had a profound impact on our patients and our local community and also our staff who come to work every day determined to provide safe and high quality care for all of our patients. Our staff are devastated by what has happened and we are committed to ensuring that lessons continue to be learned. We are grateful for the cooperation of our staff, especially those that have maintained the utmost professionalism whilst giving evidence in this trial sometimes on multiple occasions. We will continue to support them and our other staff to ensure that they receive the care and the support that they need. We would like to extend our thanks to Cheshire Police for their extensive investigation and the work they did to bring this case to trial. We'd also like to thank them for the comprehensive support that they have provided to all the families involved. Since Lucy Letby worked at our hospital, we have made significant changes to our services. And I want to provide reassurance to every patient that may access our services that they can have confidence in the care that they will receive. Finally, and most importantly, our thoughts are with all the families and loved ones at this very difficult time. At the medical director there, uh, Tom, uh, of the Countess of Chester Hospital. It was a pretty short statement, uh, a few words, and doesn't come close to answering the multitude of questions so many people have. Yes, and I think they clearly know that the independent inquiry will seek to address those concerns, and I'm sure that they are mindful of that. But nonetheless, there are those serious questions, and those questions are coming even today from those who were blowing the whistle, the consultants on that unit who were either seeing things that Lucy Letby was doing that raised concerns, or just analysing the numbers and the data around the numbers of babies who were collapsing or dying in inexplicable circumstances. And the police went into this with a very open mind. They tried to work out what was going on and closely looked through the evidence with the assistance of expert opinion. And they came to the conclusion that inflicted harm was the only viable hypothesis. And their investigation showed that by analysing the shift patterns of the neonatal unit here in Chester, the common thread that ran through all of these cases, the police have told us, was Lucy Letby. She was the one person who was on shift when these incidents occurred. And as they say, the common thread that ran through all the questions and the impact of her crimes is quite phenomenal. The lives that have been haunted by this forever, those young lives snatched away. They should be seven years old now, these children. They were the most tiny, premature, fragile babies in many instances. Children who the parents simply have to put their trust in the care, in, in the NHS teams that deal with them. And 99.9% .9 of neonatal care in the UK is incredible. And, and it, it is this rare exception to the rule that has horrified, of course, the families, but the 
wider hospital community here, those who were on the wards with Lucy Letby, the concerns, the suspicions, the flags that were raised, far-reaching fundamental questions that hospital management will have to address at some point, most likely in the independent inquiry. And it is a barometer, I think, of the gravity of this case, that within an hour or two of those guilty verdicts being reported from Manchester Crown Court, that Downing Street confirmed that an independent inquiry would take place to address the whole a subject of what happened here with the Lucy Letby case, but precisely the way that the clinicians were or were not listened to as part of the working of a NHS hospital. We have, of course, seen other maternity units under intense focus around the UK due to poor levels of care, and that has been a familiar pattern. This is different to those because there was a rogue nurse at work inflicting deliberate harm on the babies for whatever reason and we may never know the full motivations behind it but this is also about NHS failure and the NHS England uh, spokesperson who's uh, responded to these verdicts today has said that they will do everything they can to work with that inquiry to make sure that the lessons are learned but that is a phrase that patients and communities have heard many times around the UK and this, many will hope, is a watershed moment in challenging that culture of whistleblowers not being dealt with promptly and efficiently for the um, patient safety, which of course has to be the number one priority of every hospital in the country. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, Tom Parminter uh, there. And as Tom was talking about, the whistleblowers are key to all of this. They said they felt there was a problem on the ward, but told to go away, not make a fuss. A little later, they demanded to see senior management here at the hospital. It was a meeting that didn't come for a further three months. Eventually, Lucy Letby was taken off night shifts onto the busier day shifts where there were more people that could keep an eye on her, and yet the attacks kept coming. It was only eventually when she was taken off the ward, put onto clerical duties behind a desk, that all the attacks stopped. Well, tonight we'll have more on this case in a special programme. Baby Killer, how the police caught Lucy Letby. You can watch that from 7pm here from Chester. Coming up after the break, we'll have more on that news that the government has announced an independent inquiry. Stay with us. one of the most severe viruses in the world. I'm Alex Crawford and I'm Sky's special correspondent based in Istanbul. This is going to be the biggest party Tripoli has ever seen. That's it, it, it got us then. There's a lot of action going on, a lot of hits coming in still. We aim to be the best and the most trusted place in the news. This is the cocktail of drugs which the doctors at this hospital have been giving their coronavirus patients. Made for people who want clarity in an uncertain world. Mother Nature is, can be vicious, absolutely savage. The world's largest falls now down to a trickle in places. I can't imagine how much plastic is lying at the bottom of this huge lake. Whoa! <laughs> close and personal with your honor. This is what makes the job so fantastic. The 
five of us have made it out of the car. Welcome to Backstage, the film and TV podcast. Hello again, welcome back. You're watching Sky News. We're live at the Countess of Chester Hospital after nurse Lucy Letby has been found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care at the neonatal unit here. It makes Letby the most prolific child killer in modern British history and she was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies. Well, the government has ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances behind the murders here at the hospital. I'm joined now by our political correspondent, Liz Bates. Uh, Liz, what's the health secretary had to say? Uh, yes, so first of all, uh, from Steve Barclay, the health secretary, we have had a statement uh, from him today, as you would expect. What he has said is, uh, first of all, I would like to send my deepest sympathy to all the parents and families impacted by this horrendous case. He goes on, this inquiry will seek to ensure the parents and families impacted get the answers they need. I am determined their voices are heard and they're involved in shaping the scope of the inquiry should they wish to do so. Following on from the work already underway by NHS England, it will help us identify where and how patient safety standards fail to be met and ensure mothers and their partners rightly uh, have faith in their healthcare system. And I think, uh, as we've been saying on this programme already, it shows uh, the real uh, significance of this case, that the government has acted so quickly uh, in announcing this inquiry. I think, obviously, absolutely central to this will be the major questions that need to be asked, particularly around senior management and why some of that whistleblowing and the warnings that were brought to them uh, were uh, ignored or sidelined for such a long time. The way that the government is putting it is that vital lessons uh, need to be learned and that they want to provide those answers to the parents and families that they are desperately now uh, searching for. It will look at the handling of concerns and governance as well as what actions were taken uh, by regulators and the wider NHS. Uh, within the statement as well that the government has released today, uh, they also say more broadly that they are committed to making sure to making sure that the NHS is one of the safest places in the world to give birth and every single parent across the country deserves to feel confident that their babies are receiving safe and world-class treatment and I think look that is addressing uh, what will presumably be uh, real shock waves uh, not just the impact on the immediate parents and families uh, of these uh, of the victims in this case but also among the general public, people that use the NHS and want to feel that they have trust in that service and to know that lessons have been learned. And I think the inquiry will address, hopefully, uh, all of those things. I expect that there will be a, a, a huge amount of cross-party support for this, that many MPs will get behind it. Lots of MPs already tweeting uh, messages of condolence to uh, these families, but also uh, their support as well for an independent inquiry. In terms of uh, the uh, the terms of this inquiry and who will head it up, uh, we will get uh, an announcement uh, on that. The government say 
in due course, a chair will be appointed and uh, the terms of reference will be set out. Uh, the other thing that's quite interesting today uh, that we've had is a, a Ministry of Justice uh, spokesperson statement. Now, this is on a slightly different issue, and I think what this is addressing is the fact that Lucy Letby uh, did not go to court for some of the verdicts that were delivered, and the expectation is that she won't go to court for sentencing uh, next week either, and the Ministry of Justice have said the Lord Chancellor has been clear. He wants victims to see justice delivered and for all those found guilty to hear society's condemnation at their sentencing hearing. Defendants can already be ordered by a judge to attend court with those who fail, facing up to two years in prison. So they are the rules uh, as they stand. But they, uh, so the case in the case of Lucy Letby, she has been told to go to court, but uh, refusing to go, you could end up in, in contempt of court. I think the the government wants to uh, toughen up those rules, and there'll be there'll be new legislation on the non-attendance of sentencing, but that, of course, won't be in time for that sentencing of Lucy Letby uh, on Monday. And another uh, very difficult moment, of course, for the families that have already endured such unimaginable uh, tragedy. Of course, uh, Liz, thank you very much. Liz Bates there in uh, Westminster for us. Now, we're not allowed to name any of the little victims uh, in this case or indeed their parents. That's because the judge has ordered that they are entitled to, quite rightly, lifetime anonymity. But we can tell you what happened to them. Uh, babies such as little baby I, she was just two pounds when she was born, 10 weeks premature. Uh, she was stable. She needed no special care on the unit uh, when she was attacked. Lucy Letby attempted to kill her three times. On the fourth occasion, she was successful. A nurse told the court about the hours just before little baby eye's death. She said she heard her screaming in a way she'd never heard before. It was loud, it was relentless, it was almost constant with no fluctuation. She said she went into the room and saw Letby's hands in the incubator. Letby said she was trying to settle her. The truth is she was being injected with air. We'll have more about this investigation after the break.
five of us have made it out of the car. Welcome to Backstage, the film and TV podcast. Hello again, welcome back. You're watching Sky News. We're live outside the Countess of Chester Hospital. Ongoing coverage after nurse Lucy Letby was found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care. Letby, the most prolific child killer in modern British history, was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies. Well, the government has now ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances surrounding the murders. Sky correspondent Tom Parminter has worked with our data and forensics team to analyse the police investigation into one of the UK's worst child killers. It's the case nobody wanted to believe could be true. But for the police, convicting Lucy Letby was the culmination of a painstaking and distressing investigation. The key aspect of this investigation has been always asking ourselves, a, who else could it be if not her? Lucy Letby started working at the Countess of Chester Hospital in January 2012, just before her 22nd birthday. She joined as a nurse in the neonatal unit. But from January 2015, the mortality rate at the unit began to rise above what might be considered normal rates. It was unexpected. And unexplained are two words they don't deal with in neonatal medicine. If a child collapses, it's usually explainable. Um, and it's usually always expected. On the 5th of August, child F was in nursery two. Letby was looking after another infant in the same room. But at 1.54 in the morning, child F suffered an unexpected drop in his blood sugar and a surge in his heart rate. The baby survived, and a blood test revealed he'd been given insulin that he didn't need. There was no reason why no baby on the unit was being prescribed it. It was kept in a locked fridge next to the nurse's station. And this pattern continued. There were more babies who lost their lives or suffered unexpected collapses. The initial focus uh, was around the hypotheses of you know, what could have occurred. So it could be an organic reason, it could be a virus. Um, and then one of the hypotheses was that it, obviously it could be um, inflicted harm. The more experts they talked to, the more evidence they gathered, the more the case started to take shape. Then, on the 3rd of July 2018, Lucy Letby was arrested. Searches of her home in Chester and her parents' house in Hereford uncovered patient records and handwritten notes that gave clues about her state of mind. Among the scrawled notes were the words, I am evil. I did this. In her bedroom, stuffed into these shopping bags were hospital handover sheets. In total, 257 were found. Many included details of the babies Letby had allegedly harmed. Her social media showed searches for 11 of the families affected. Police also discovered that she sent one of her alleged victim's parents a sympathy card on the day of the baby's funeral. She kept an image of the card on her phone. Crucially, the police also analysed her shift patterns. Look at the line of crosses. They showed that Letby was the only member of staff on shift when all the incidents took place. On the 11th of November 2020, over two years after she was arrested, Lucy Letby was charged with murder and attempted murder. Letby always denied harming the babies in her care but the evidence told a different, more harrowing story. 
Well, you get a real sense there, don't you, of the uh, huge scale and complexity of the police investigation, the amount of evidence that they had to sift through, and indeed the number of witnesses they had to speak to before it even got to the stage of uh, bringing Lucy Letby to trial in Manchester. And of course, it's not the first case of this nature in the United Kingdom. Beverly Allett was a nurse at Grantham Hospital in Lincolnshire, and she was given 13 life sentences back in 1993 for murdering four children and attempting to kill three others. Uh, well, let's bring in former Detective Superintendent Stuart Clifton, who led that investigation. Stuart, good to have you uh, on the programme. I'm sure, like all of us, just reeling at today's news. We'll talk about the similarities between this and your case in a moment, but first of all, your, your reaction to these verdicts. Well, look, that, these type of enquiries are extreme, aren't they? Because one doesn't expect somebody that joins a caring profession to be carrying out acts that harm children. So they are extreme in, in, in that sense. And fortunately, uh, there are not many of them um, ar around the country, certainly not that we're aware of. Extreme indeed, but of course, when they do come to light, they are so desperately shocking and upsetting. Just, just remind us about the case you worked on, that of Beverly Allett. Well, the, the Beverly Allett um, case started in, in the spring of 1991 and involved a total of 13 children who, between them, had collapsed 24 times. Four, sadly, four of those children had died. and. The case, like presumably like the one um, that you're currently talking about, the Letby case, relies upon expert medical evidence. Policemen are not medical experts. What they do is, is gather evidence and ask experts in the medical field to analyse it and then offer their opinion. And it's their opinions that are, that are then put before a jury. It's a very, very difficult jo job, I think, for jurors to sit through a, a trial of many, many weeks and months like the Letby trial and to retain all of the uh, bits of evidence that, that come out during the um, cross-examination that, that, that takes place during the course of the trial. And I, I take my hat off to jurors because it, it is a very difficult job. Oh, it really is, and uh, I think uh, everybody will um, be very proud of our justice system today. Those jurors deliberating for well over 100 hours, around four weeks, going back into the jury room day after day, meticulously going through uh, all the evidence. And um, what were the similarities then between Alet's case and Letby's? Well, both both were nurses. Both harmed children in their care. There was no apparent motive for either of, of the murders and, and harm that was uh, um, committed on children. There didn't seem to be, certainly in the Alec case, there didn't seem to be any obvious motive. My view of it was that, that she was looking to be what I would call centre stage. She wanted the kudos that went with having discovered um, babies that, that were suffering harm and then drawing it to the attention of, of um, people like the resuscitation team and doctors and other nurses on, on that ward. From what little I know of the, of, of the Letby case, I can't see any obvious reason um, that a, a trained nurse would commit the acts that she's been convicted of on children there. So the similarities are that there is no obvious motive. It's committed by nurses in a caring profession that you wouldn't expect to be doing these sort of things. And the motive is something that hangs in the air that we can only guess at. And, of course, when you're carrying out an investigation of this uh, magnitude and, and sensitivity, the families must always be at the forefront of your mind. Of, of course. I mean, uh, 
the families are suffering enough trauma, aren't they, because their children have been harmed and in some cases m murdered. So there is family trauma already existing. On top of that, policemen then have to go and carry out investigations which add to that trauma because it brings back memories that perhaps they want to put behind them. So it's very, very difficult both for the collectors of evidence, the police, and for the families themselves. It's equally difficult, I think, for the nurses that work on the ward because there's only one in the Alec case that committed uh, the offences against children, but all of the other nurses suffered as a direct result of it because they saw children collapsing, they were traumatised, they, they didn't want to accept that it was one of their own that, w that was doing it, and I presume that that is pretty much the same in this Let Me trial. It really is. Um, former Detective Superintendent Stuart Clifton, uh, who uh, dealt with the Beverly Alec case. Uh, very good to get your thoughts and analysis on this uh, uh, desperate day. Thank you. Um, and as uh, Stuart was saying there, we must uh, think of those jury members today who have listened to months of harrowing evidence. Nine months this trial took. Nine months where they put their own lives on pause and then a further month of uh, deliberation 22 days in total they spent in the jury room more than a hundred hours going through this case in order to get to the verdicts that they have reached uh, do stay with us ongoing coverage on lucy letby found guilty of seven baby murders one of the most severe viruses in the world. I'm Alex Crawford and I'm Sky's special correspondent based in Istanbul. This is going to be the biggest party Tripoli has ever seen. That's it. it, it got us then. There's a lot of action going on. A lot of heat still. We aim to be the best and the most trusted place in the news. at all, a lot of them extremely thin and very frail. Look at her arms, I can put my entire hand round. This is the cocktail of drugs which the doctors at this hospital have been giving their coronavirus patients. Made for people who want clarity in an uncertain world. Mother Nature is, can be vicious, absolutely savage. I can't imagine how much plastic is lying at the bottom of this huge lake. Oh! <laughs> close and personal with the rhino. This is what makes the job so fantastic. Five of us have made it out of the car. Welcome to Backstage, the film and TV podcast.
Hello again. You're watching Sky News. We're live outside the Countess of Chester Hospital after nurse Lucy Letby was found guilty of the murder of seven babies in her care in the neonatal unit behind me. Let be the most prolific child killer in modern British history, was also found guilty of trying to kill six other babies on the unit. Well, we've heard today from DCI Nicola Evans from Cheshire Constabulary, who said Lucy Letby used her normality to commit crimes on an unimaginable scale. Lucy Letby was an average nurse. She was um, an average 20-something year old um, with a job, a friendship group and um, a social life that you would expect. She was normal in that respect. I would res describe her as a, a beige individual in that she was, she was normal as you, would, you, as you would imagine. She used that normality and the trust that she gained through being an average 20-something-year-old to commit crimes of an unimaginable scale. The point in which we informed the families of what we believed was happening, the suspicions, was the point in which the medical experts had returned their initial findings to us, so at the first arrest of Lucy Letby and the families were informed that we suspected that a crime had been committed and they were informed of Lucy Letby's arrest. Some of these families were grieving for their children, for their babies, and then we told them that during that grief that actually there was a suspicion around what had happened to their baby. I can't imagine how that must have felt for them at that point. Has there ever been a motive or a, a working hypothesis as to what her motive may have been for doing this that you as an investigating force have looked at? So our objective has always been to get those answers for the families. Um, I believe that we've answered most of those questions. We haven't answered all of them. And the one question we haven't answered is why. I don't know whether we will ever be able to answer that question and only Lucy Letby can answer that. As a police officer, that's really hard to take. It's really hard to think we haven't, we haven't answered everything for them. And it must be really difficult for the families to accept that we might never have the answer as to why this has happened. Substantially before you were contacted, there were specific suspicions about her conduct. Do you feel that they in typically pract in normal practice they should have been acted upon? It's frustrating as an investigation and on an emotional level. Could we have could we have done something earlier? Had the police been informed earlier? But ultimately, they are questions that will be answered by other people other than, other than me. Uh, DCI Nicola Evans speaking to uh, Katerina Vitozzi. Uh, our correspondent Tom Parmenter has been following this trial and is with me now. And Tom, we've been hearing from some of those whistleblowers today who were ignored. Yeah, that is one of the big searching questions in the aftermath of this court case, is how was this allowed to happen when people in the neonatal unit here in Chester were telling the management that they were unhappy, that they were suspicious of what Lucy Letby was doing in the course of her duties and the fact that they believed she may be in some way responsible. And there are far-reaching questions. We've spoken to one of the consultants this afternoon, John Gibbs, one of the senior uh, paediatricians on the unit. He has said to us, could we have spotted and stopped her earlier? Why did it take so long for the management of the hospital to agree to call in the police? And all that, of course, we know now will form part of an independent inquiry called for by the government today. Yeah, parents saying to us uh, that it could have stopped and children lives could have been saved uh, 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 and talking of the lives of those children those innocent little victims we've been reflecting on some of them yes and we know horrifically that there were seven murders but we also know that there was a series of attempted murders as well where she tried to sabotage the care of babies one of them was baby g who was a little girl she was the most premature of all the babies born uh, into uh, 
this case, uh, she was actually born at a different hospital and came here. When she was treated, Lucy Letby um, sabotaged her care. She was convicted of two of the counts in relation to baby G, but cleared of a third. But the impact on this child is still that she's a seven-year-old with severe problems and she requires round-the-clock care even today. Her dad said to the court, after she was attacked, she seemed different, did not respond to my voice anymore. We do not know what her life expectancy is. Oh, Tom, that's awful. Um, so a baby who survived now has uh, life-lasting injuries and her parents have to live with that. Uh, ongoing coverage after Lucy Letby was found guilty of murder. Five of us have made it out of the car. Welcome to Backstage, the film and TV podcast. watching the news hour we will be live from the countess of chester hospital after the nurse lucy letby was found guilty of murdering seven babies letby was described in court as a calculated opportunist and also convicted of attempting to kill six other babies 
A statement issued by victims' families said they were heartbroken but thanked jurors for sitting through 145 days of gruelling evidence. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Well, the government has now launched an independent inquiry into the case while police say they are reviewing the care of 4,000 other babies. Also ahead on the news hour this evening, running out of time, residents of the Canadian city of Yellowknife are ordered to flee in the next two hours with wildfires bearing down. And as the Lionesses gear up for a World Cup final showdown against Spain, Sky News speaks to England manager Serena Wiegmann. What we are focusing on is uh, how, how do we want to uh, play and uh, we're going to do anything to be at our best and then hopefully that gives us the success we want. Hello there and good evening from the Countess of Chester Hospital. Lucy Letby, a former neonatal nurse here, has now been found guilty of murdering seven babies and trying to kill six others. Her crimes make her the most prolific child killer in modern British history. She refused to appear in court for the final verdicts but will be sentenced. On conclusion of the trial, Well, on conclusion of the trial, uh, the government announced an independent inquiry would be launched into the case. Our North of England correspondent, Katerina Vitozzi, followed events at Manchester Crown Court and sent this report, which we should warn you does contain distressing details. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name is Chester, please. Look, it's Stefan, two seconds. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, thank you. This arrest led to the conviction of a killer. They told me that there have been a lot more deaths and that I think that just there for a lot of them. Nurse Lucy Letby, now the UK's most prolific child murderer of modern times. She's taken lives. She's tried to take other babies' lives. So whatever sentence she gets, it's not going to be enough. Hiding her crimes behind a smile and an NHS badge we can now reveal what colleagues suspected all along. When alarms would go off, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use, I wonder if Lucy's working tonight. Lucy Letby was nearly 22 when she started working here at the Countess of Chester Hospital's neonatal ward. Originally from Hereford, she'd been here for around four years when the attacks involved in this case began. It's about a 20-minute walk from where Lucy Letby lived to the ward where she worked. And over many months, the jury has heard difficult and distressing detail about what happened in that hospital between June 2015 and June 2016, about how during that time, seven babies died, five boys and two girls, and about how 10 other children suddenly collapsed and needed life-saving care. This used to be nursery one, also coined the hot room. This video was taken of the ward where Lucy Letby worked. It's where a jury agreed she killed children in her care. She used injections of insulin, excessive air and milk, even physical assault to make babies sick, collapse and die. On the 9th of April, she was working here in nursery one, Twin brothers, child L and M, were here too. Speaking to media for the very first time, the boy's parents remember the moment baby M collapsed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image, I'll never forget. When it went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like, like a rag doll, really. He was just crying, crying. And I, I said, oh my God, what happened? And I was just praying to God, saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first-time parents. We didn't know what was going on. 
In fact, what they were seeing was the aftermath of Letby's attack. She had tried to kill both boys within hours of each other. She was standing calm and, and cool. And what I can remember was at the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. Police first arrested and then questioned Lucy Letby in 2018. Take a seat in there for me, Lucy. I'll move that seat forward a bit. Shortly. Yeah, I just had knee surgery. So. Oh, right, OK. <clears throat> they told me that there would be a lot more deaths and that I've been linked to somebody that was there for a lot of them. Did you have any concerns that there was a rise in mortality rate? Yes. Okay, so Lucy Letby has always denied every charge against her. I think we don't just notice as a, as a team in general in this and stuff. This was a nice compared to previous years. Behind that very angelic smile, there was a much darker side to her personality. She completely perverted her learning and she weaponised whatever was at her disposal. Uh, she betrayed the trust and uh, the, the, the faith that families had, you know, when. Um, that if she was telling them something, they would just accept it as correct. But over this trial, we've learnt that colleagues did have suspicions well over a year before police were called in by hospital bosses. Lindsay Artell was a nurse at the Countess of Chester. When alarms would go off during the night especially, um, there would be um, a phrase that people would use colleagues that I know I've used, I wonder if Lucy's working tonight. And that's exactly how it was. So people knew exactly what was going on. We've contacted the hospital for comment, but Lindsay and her husband also believe Lucy Letby attacked their son, Asa, when he was born premature and cared for on the ward. Cheshire police say they are already investigating if Lucy Letby hurt other babies over the rest of her career. But there remains a key question. Why Lucy Letby did this? I don't know whether we will ever be able to answer that question. And only Lucy Letby can answer that. As a police officer, that's really hard to take. And it must be really difficult for the families to accept that we might never have the answer as to why this has happened. Some also can't accept why Lucy Letby wasn't stopped earlier. If they'd acted upon the initial suspicions, then they definitely could have stopped any more babies being attacked. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. Lucy Letby's job was to cure. Instead, she killed and attacked the most vulnerable. Her victims, so tiny, so fragile, they could be carried in just one hand. Katrina Vitozzi, Sky News. Well, it's all so harrowing to listen to, isn't it? And, of course, today our thoughts are with the victims and their parents. And after the release of the verdicts, the victim's family, who can't be named for legal reasons, issued a statement saying Letby's conviction will not take away the extreme hurt, anger and distress they have all suffered. Words cannot effectively explain how we are feeling at this moment in time. We are quite simply stunned. To lose a baby is a heartbreaking experience that no parent should ever have to go through. But to lose a baby or to have a baby harmed in these particular circumstances is unimaginable. Over the past seven to eight years, we've had to go through a long, torturous and emotional journey. From losing our precious newborns and grieving their loss, seeing our children who survived, some of whom are still suffering today, to being told years later that their death or collapse might be suspicious. Nothing can prepare you for that news. Today, justice has been served and a nurse who should have been caring for our babies has been found guilty of harming them. But this justice will not take away from the extreme hurt, anger and distress that we've all had to experience.
uh, the coordinator there of the family liaison officers who have all done such an important job. Joining me now from Manchester Crown Court, Sky correspondent Katerina Vitozzi. And Katerina, we can report today that uh, these verdicts have actually been delivered over a series of days. What was the reaction each time from those in the public gallery, those victims' families watching, and indeed from Letby herself? Well, the reaction from the families of the victims has been quite consistent, always extremely emotional over the days that these verdicts have been delivered for families who heard and had that confirmation that many of them believed all along that Lucy Letby was responsible for the murder and attack of their children. There were gasps as those guilty verdicts were read out. Many parents dissolving into tears one mother hearing that Lucy Letby was guilty of murdering her child clutched a stuffed rabbit toy close to her face and, and cried into it. And also what we saw were families comforting each other. These were families that were strangers when their children were on that neonatal ward between June 2015 and June 2016. And over the course of the many months of this trial, over the many years of this investigation, have grown to know each other and they were comforting each other in court today. Very unusually, we also saw some jury members today also in tears. It's something you don't, you rarely see uh, during the course of a criminal case. As for Lucy Letby, well, as you say, the verdicts delivered over the course of several days and the first delivery of verdicts, which were two guilty counts of attempted murder, initially she cried whilst in the dock. Her parents were also in the courtroom. They also cried, her mother whispering to her father, or Lucy Letby's mother whispering to Lucy Letby's father, this can't be serious, this can't be right, and, and crying. But over the last several deliveries of verdicts, Lucy Letby refused to leave the cells in the court building next to me. She refused to be in dock to hear the remaining verdicts being read out, and she has indicated to her defence team that she will not be in the court for sentencing and she will refuse also to appear via a video link. And I think that will be extremely distressing for the families who have had to sit and see her over the course of the trial consistently, repeatedly and vigorously deny attacking and murdering their children. Now for them not to be able to see her in person when she receives a sentence for these atrocious crimes against their children, I think that will be deeply distressing and very, very upsetting. We have also seen high emotions amongst the officers involved in this case. We've spoken to many of them, including the Deputy Senior Investigating Officer, DCI Nicola Evans. She told us that officers wouldn't be the same people they were now as they were when they started this investigation back in 2017, as she gave a very emotional statement just on the courtroom steps behind me shortly after the jury were discharged today. I cannot begin to imagine how the families in this case feel today. I just hope that the, today's verdicts bring all of them some peace of mind for the future and that we have answered some of the questions that they were looking for. Cheshire Constabulary will continue to support all of the families in this case in the coming days and weeks ahead. And I think that emotion is clear from all the police officers investigating there. But Nicola Evans, quite rightly, at this time, putting her focus on the families of the victims, families we've spoken to over the course of this trial and jury deliberations, who tell us now, for them, they feel like they may have seen justice done, but in terms of sentencing, whatever sentence Lucy Letby receives, for them, it will never feel enough. OK, Katerina, many thanks. So that's the view from Manchester Crown Court. We've also been hearing from the medical director here at the Countess of Chester Hospital. Dr Nigel Scorn issued an apology to the victims and their families. I speak for the whole Trust when I say how deeply saddened and appalled we are at Lucy Letby's crimes. We are extremely sorry that these crimes were committed at our hospital and our thoughts continue to be with all the families and loved ones of the babies who came to harm or who died. We cannot begin to understand what they have been through. 
This case has had a profound impact on our patients and our local community and also our staff who come to work every day determined to provide safe and high quality care for all of our patients. Our staff are devastated by what has happened and we are committed to ensuring that lessons continue to be learned. Uh, the medical director here at the Countess of Chester Hospital speaking to us a short time ago. Tom Parminter has been following this case throughout and is with me at the hospital. That was quite a short statement, wasn't it, from the director of the hospital? Um, and, of course, it leaves many, many unanswered questions. Yes, it was a statement that, while expressing the sentiments that he did, did not address the whistleblowing concerns that many people have around what happened in this case how colleagues of Lucy Letby were telling the management at this hospital that something was wrong. They were not happy working alongside Lucy Letby, but still this, as we know now, kind of pattern of behaviour carried on for 12 months at this hospital from the summer of 2015 to the summer of 2016. And it's a reminder, I think, just being stood here, speaking about this case today, we see parents going in and out of the maternity unit, carrying tiny babies away from the unit or going in for an appointment, that this is a functioning hospital community, that while of course the focus and thoughts primarily are with the families, this is a community that is hurting today because of what happened and because of the very difficult questions that it has led to. We've spoken to one of the consultants this evening who has said that they are concerned as to why the whistleblowing was not dealt with properly and whether or not infants could have been saved by the correct procedures being followed and that will form part of this independent inquiry that the government were very quick to confirm in the hours after the guilty verdicts were able to be reported from Manchester Crown Court. Big fundamental questions but primarily this is a case about a killer who was operating on these wards and that is a very dark place to go and the police officers had to go into that with a very open mind as to what was happening, why were the levels of infant mortality so much higher here and as we'll hear now in a look very closely at the detail of the police case it was something that they arrived at that it was inflicted harm and that it was one of the nurses working here in Chester. It's the case nobody wanted to believe could be true but for the police, convicting Lucy Letby was the culmination of a painstaking and distressing investigation. The key aspect of this investigation has been always asking ourselves, A, who else could it be if not her? Lucy Letby started working at the Countess of Chester Hospital in January 2012, just before her 22nd birthday. She joined as a nurse in the neonatal unit. But from January 2015, the mortality rate at the unit began to rise above what might be considered normal rates. It was unexpected and unexplained are two words they don't deal with in neonatal medicine. If a child collapses, it's usually explainable um, and it's usually always expected. On the 5th of August, child F was in nursery two. Letby was looking after another infant in the same room, but at 1.54 in the morning, child F suffered an unexpected drop in his blood sugar and a surge in his heart rate. The baby survived, and a blood test revealed he'd been given insulin that he didn't need. There was no reason why no baby on the unit was being prescribed it. It was kept in a locked fridge next to the nurse's station. And this pattern continued. There were more babies who lost their lives or suffered unexpected collapses. The initial focus uh, was around the hypotheses of you know, what could have occurred. So it could be an organic reason, it could be a virus. Um, and then one of the hypotheses was that it, obviously it could be um, inflicted harm. The more experts they talked to, the more evidence they gathered the more the case started to take shape. Then, on the 3rd of July 2018, Lucy Letby was arrested. Searches of her home in Chester and her parents' house in Hereford 
uncovered patient records and handwritten notes that gave clues about her state of mind. Among the scrawled notes were the words, I am evil, I did this. In her bedroom, stuffed into these shopping bags were hospital handover sheets. In total, 257 were found. Many included details of the babies Letby had allegedly harmed. Her social media showed searches for 11 of the families affected. The police also discovered that she sent one of her alleged victim's parents a sympathy card on the day of the baby's funeral. She kept an image of the card on her phone. Crucially, the police also analysed her shift patterns. Look at the line of crosses. They showed that Letby was the only member of staff on shift when all the incidents took place. On the 11th of November 2020, over two years after she was arrested, Lucy Letby was charged with murder and attempted murder. Letby always denied harming the babies in her care, but the evidence told a different, more harrowing story. Well, as we've been hearing, 4,000 cases are now being reviewed by police and detectives. And while the government announced it is launching an independent inquiry into Letby's case, uh, let's head to Westminster, bring in uh, Liz Bates, our political correspondent. Uh, so, Liz, what has the Health Secretary been saying? Well, yes, Steve Barclay, we have heard from him, uh, unsurprisingly, about this case. He has released a statement to say, uh, first of all, I would like to send my deepest sympathy to all the parents and families impacted by this horrendous case. This inquiry will seek to ensure the parents and families impacted get the answers they need. I am determined their voices are heard and they are involved in shaping the scope of the inquiry, should they wish to do so. Following on from the work already underway by NHS England, it will help us identify where and how patient safety standards fail to be met and ensure mothers and their, par uh, and their partners rightly have faith in our healthcare system. Um, uh, look, I think it's quite clear, first of all, how serious the government is taking uh, this case, that this inquiry has been uh, announced uh, just with our, uh, within hours uh, of those uh, uh, verdicts being reported. Um, I think it will focus, uh, first of all, on giving answers uh, to the families and the people involved in these horrendously uh, tragic cases. But there are also many questions, uh, of course, that we've covered already on the programme for senior uh, management figures in the NHS. Why uh, were concerns that were raised uh, sometimes ignored, sometimes sidelined? Why were whistleblowers ignored and how many lives could have been saved if that hadn't happened? I think these will be the big questions that the uh, inquiry focuses on. In this statement that the government has released today as well, they also say, uh, first of all, that they will continue uh, to support the families that have been affected, but also uh, that this inquiry is about making the NHS, um, uh, ensuring that the NHS is one of the safest places in the world to give birth. So this is about reassuring the public as well. In, in terms of the terms of the inquiry and the chair, uh, we'll get uh, more, more detail on that in due course, the government say. Liz in Westminster, thank you. And tonight we will have more on this case in our dedicated programme, Baby Killer, How the Police Caught Lucy Letby. You can catch that live from 7 o'clock here in Chester. The big question, of course, this evening in all of this is why did Lucy Letby decide to do what she did? Why did she try to kill so many babies and succeed in killing seven? The prosecution suggested she got a thrill out of what she was doing. They also said she liked the attention and perhaps wanted to be seen as someone who was capable as she rushed to help them after they had collapsed. Uh, plenty more from here at the Countess of Chester Hospital, but right now back to Sky News Centre and Kimberley. Jonathan, thank you. You're watching the News Hour. Coming up this evening, tens of thousands race to flee wildfires in Canada as an evacuation deadline approaches.
So now it's coming from both sides and it's moving this way. Only about half a mile from the Turkish coast and it's evident that the boat seriously overcrowded. This is one of the most severe viruses in the world. I'm Alex Crawford and I'm Sky's special correspondent based in Istanbul. This is going to be the biggest party Tripoli has ever seen. That's it, it, it got us then. There's a lot of action going on, a lot of heat still. We aim to be the best and the most trusted place in news. to eat at all. A lot of them extremely thin and very frail. Look at her arms. I can put my entire hand round. This is the cocktail of drugs which the doctors at this hospital have been giving their coronavirus patients. Made for people who want clarity in an uncertain world. Mother Nature is, can be vicious, absolutely savage. I can't imagine how much plastic is lying at the bottom of this huge lake. Oh! <laughs> close and personal with the rhino. This is what makes the job so fantastic. Five of us have made it out of the car. Welcome to Backstage, the film and TV podcast. Twenty thousand residents have been racing to evacuate a remote city in Canada's northwest as a massive wildfire approaches. Roads and air routes out of Yellowknife have been packed with residents scrambling to leave before the evacuation deadline comes into place in just under two hours. Let's speak to our US correspondent, James Matthews. He's following the story from Washington. So that deadline is fast approaching, James. Hi, Kimberly. Yes, yeah, about an hour and 20 minutes away. And the people of Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories, one of the, the largest cities in that area of Canada, they have been told to get out of town for their own safety, that midday Friday deadline. And in the run up to that, we have seen long traffic queues on the road out of Yellowknife, thousands taking to their vehicles, also thousands, around 5,000, are being evacuated by air, Canada's military has been involved not just in Yellowknife, but also uh, in other communities who are subject to evacuation orders, the largest military air evacuation in the Northwest Territories. In terms of Yellowknife itself, it's one of the largest cities in that area of northern Canada. The authorities have warned people that without rain, these fires could reach the city limits by tomorrow, and people have been told very directly their safety is at risk if they stay in town any longer. Canada is no stranger to wildfires, of course. I mean, this year there have been more than 4,000 of them. 
it has caused record damage in that country. Uh, something like 14 million hectares and more has been burnt. That's twice the previous record in 1989. Four firefighters in recent months have been killed uh, in their efforts to contain the blaze as it spreads across the country. OK, James, thank you so much. Uh, let's have a quick look at the weather. Warm memories wherever you go. To fly, to fly. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. Well, during a very unsettled summer, Storm Betty becomes the second named storm this month with strong winds, heavy rain and violent thunderstorms spreading north. In the wake of the storm, the weather will settle over southern and eastern areas, while northern and western parts of the country will remain unsettled and changeable. This evening, heavy rain spreading up from the southwest will bring a significant risk of potent thunderstorms with torrential downpours and frequent lightning. East Anglia and the southeast will be the most vulnerable.